Television. Cam Newton matching up against J.J. Watt. The kickoff is straight ahead. CBS Sports welcomes you to the following presentation of the National Football League. Welcome back to a beautiful day in Charlotte, North Carolina. The sun is shining. It is 83 degrees. It is tradition here in Charlotte. Prior to a Panthers game, to pound the drum. Keep pounding is the phrase in honor of the late Carolina Panther player and coach, Sam Mills. And the honors today fall to NBA MVP Steph Curry, who hails from these parts. Well, is he just as well as he drops the three-pointer. Let's go down to Jamie Erdahl. Jamie. Well, Greg, with Luke Keekley out with the concussion, you and Trent mentioned the big hole up the middle that now resolves in this Panthers defense. Now that responsibility falls to backup third-year pro A.J. Klein. Ron Rivera told us that he's very lucky this linebacking group is already very vocal. In fact, this summer, the Panthers mic'd up the linebackers and the safeties at OTAs and mini camps and had the players listen back to those tapes to make sure they were communicating properly on the field. Now that responsibility, because Luke Keekley calls a defensive place with this team, falls to A.J. Klein, Greg. Thank you, Jamie. Big Ron Rivera told us yesterday that a lot of people were very surprised at what they heard on those tapes when they were played back. Yeah, you, you, sometimes as a player, you don't necessarily know all the conversations that go on. You know what you're focused on, but some of that can be a surprise. Carolina on the receiving end of the opening kick, and it will not be returned. Houston won the toss and deferred. So that means Cam Newton, the Carolina quarterback, number one pick overall back in 2011, 175 yards and a touchdown throwing last week, and another 55 on the ground, Trent. He's a, he's a combination threat. We talked about that in the opening. The fact that as a defensive unit, the Texans need to maintain their rush lanes. They need to maintain their gaps because if you leave a crease, Cam Newton will find it. Jonathan Stewart in the backfield, along with Cam Newton, who will work out of the shotgun. And he will throw on first down. Sideline going for the interception. On the pass to Greg Olson was number 27, Quinton Demps. Brian Khalil is the veteran in the middle of the Panthers' offensive line in his ninth season out of USC. And Jonathan Stewart rushed for 56 yards in last week's win at Jacksonville. He caught four passes for another 25. Second and 10. Newton on the quick slant, that's incomplete. Off the fingertips of Ted Ginn Jr. Texans have the best defensive player in football up front in J.J. Watt. After an injury-plagued rookie season, Houston fields last year's number one overall pick, Jadevian Clowney, is rounding into playing shape. And like Clowney, quarterback Jonathan Joseph hails from Rock Hill, South Carolina, just 27 miles from here. Third and ten. Penalty markers fly. And that looked like number 74, Mike Remmers, the right tackle. False start. Offense, number 74. Five-yard penalty. Still third down. Cleet Blakeman is our referee today. The Carolina talking last week's game, not getting the ball to Greg Olson enough, coming down on first down there. Trying to squeeze it to him, and Quentin Dempse, as you said, Greg, was, was all over it. Then on second down... Can't put a little heat on that one on the slant round to Ted Ginn. You see the pressure coming off the slot here as the flag comes in. Neutral zone infraction. Defense over 56. Five yard penalty. Still third down. That's Brian Cushing, so the Texans take it and they give it away. What's important here on third down, keep an eye on where Greg Olson's going to be and where that matchup's going to be in the middle of the field. Newton. Tip does it, left his hand, and it falls incomplete. 
like Brian Cushing may have been in on the Carolina quarterback, and it'll be the punting unit onto the field. Well, you have to be calculated with the pressure that you bring, and Romeo Cornell talked to me about that. He said with Cam Newton, you have to maintain those wrestlings. You want to put pressure on him, but you want to keep him in the pocket because when he breaks outside the pocket, that's when you really expose what's going on on the defensive side of the ball. Brad Nortman will kick it away to Keith Mumphrey. This is returnable from the 20. Across the 25 to about the 27-yard line. 60-yard punt and an 8-yard return. And here comes number 15, Ryan Mallett, in his fifth season out of Arkansas, making only his third career start today, appearing in just his ninth NFL game. His job to keep, Trent. You know, Ryan Mallett is, isn't on a short leash. We talked to Coach O'Brien about that, and he said, you know, of a, from a playing experience standpoint, Ryan Mallett has less playing experience, so they want to give him an opportunity to see what he can do, and, and obviously that's why he's getting to start here today. A little mix-up on the snap. Looks like Mallett might have gotten the ball sooner than he expected it. Starting left tackle Dwayne Brown out with a hand injury today, making for a major shuffling on the line. Chris Clark replaces him. Jeff Adams and Derek Newton switch sides. Arian Foster not ready yet to return at running back. DeAndre Hopkins had the big day last week with 98 yards receiving and two touchdowns. Loss of one on the play, second and 11 for Mallett. Into the hands and dropped by Garrett Graham. Up front for the Panther defense, Charles Johnson has 62 and a half career sacks. Kyle Love starts for Star Latulale, who's not yet back from foot surgery. Middle linebacker Luke Keekley out with the concussion protocol. We told you A.J. Klein starts for him. And cornerback Josh Norman had quite the day last week. A forced fumble, a fumble recovery, and a 30-yard pick six. Third and 11. Mallet with the quick pass outside going nowhere. Hit at the 20-yard line, Josh Norman. Josh Norman anticipated that and jumped all over it. Trying to get a quick wide receiver screen as Norman reads it from the snap. Beats the block and is able to come up with the tackle for loss. When we asked Josh Norman yesterday, do you like to talk on the field? He said a little bit. <laughs> he said... He said, I don't like to start it, but I'll finish it if someone else wants to get going. Ted Ginn Jr. is deep. And makes the call for the fair catch, and we get a penalty marker down on the near sideline. So here's Cleet Blakeman. Personal foul. Receiving team number 21. Play went out of bounds and blocked a, an opponent. It's a 15 yard penalty from the end of the kick. First down, Carolina. That's Teddy Williams, a spare cornerback for Carolina. So that is going to back Cam Newton and the Panthers up. And we'll take a timeout with 13 11 to play in the first. This is the NFL on CBS. Second Carolina penalty of the day as the Panthers starting from their own 15-yard line, and that's Jonathan Stewart. Time for us to go green. We talked about the pass rush and the pressure that the two outside edges bring. Here, J.J. Watt to your left and Jadevian Clowney to the right. It looks like they're going to pressure with the blitz, but the inside guys drop out in the zone blitz. Clowney comes from right to left up the middle, bring pressure up the slot. The number four defender that you see there, that does not allow Alex Smith to set his feet flushes Alex Smith into the pocket, and that's where J.J. Watt picks up the sack. We have an injured Carolina Panther on one knee at the 17-yard line. Looks to be maybe Trey Turner, the right guard. And with that, we will take a break with 12.52 to play in the first.
here in Charlotte, one of the best places for fan and player interaction. That was the Panthers in an after-practice feast with some of the locals. Here's a handoff to Jonathan Stewart, and Stewart out across the 20 to the 21-yard line. Let's go back to that injury and see what happened. Well, let's take a look right here. You'll see his ankle gets rolled up on by Vince Wilfork. Watch here as the play continues. Wilfork just falls right into the back of his leg. You don't want to speculate. Obviously, it's a lower leg injury. Right now, Chris Scott is in the game at right guard. That's 6'2", 325 falling on your ankle. And that's what's on paper. <laughs> on third and four, Cam Newton with time throwing and came up way short of his intended receiver, Kareem Jackson, the nearest. Let's go down to Jamie. Well, Greg, I know it looked like that left ankle got rolled on too, but when they came to the sideline, Trey Turner was actually having his left knee worked on, and he just walked down the tunnel on his own accord with no help, but they wanted to go check it out a little more. All right, Jamie, thank you. So no first downs for Carolina on this possession either. On well, the one putting pressure on Cam Newton on that last play was J.J. Watt. He was being double teamed by tight end Greg, by Ed Dixon, and the running back was able to get through the pressure Cam Newton. This is Mumphrey, back to his own 19. Switching direction a couple of times. Penalty flag flies in from behind as he is brought down at about the 33 or 34 yard line. And now another flag is thrown. The laundry's out early today, Trent. Yeah, there have been a few, a, a lot early on. I think it's important, though, as the Texans take the field here to get Ryan Mallett into some kind of rhythm. I know that first series, they tried the wide receiver screen. They tried the, the, the quick throw into the flat. Neither one of those was successful. I think it's important to get him into a little bit of a rhythm here early on. During the return, illegal block in the back. Return team number 57. It's a 10-yard penalty from the spot of foul. First down, Houston. So Justin Tuggle is guilty of the foul on the play. Boy, there are some key people missing from this Houston versus Carolina matchup today. Arian Foster still not ready to play yet after groin surgery. Wayne Brown, we told you, out with the hand injury. Luke Keekley's concussion and Starla Tulele not yet ready to play after foot surgery. First down. Play fake. Mallet on the move, throwing in and out of the hands of his intended receiver, Nate Washington. And Washington had lots and lots of room to run. Well, the Texans had pretty much sold out on the fact that they were going to throw this ball deep. They had DeAndre Hopkins on the far side of the field going deep, and Nate Washington on the underneath trying to drag across. That's a delicate throw to make when you have the defender cutting underneath, and with Mallet on the rollout, that makes it a much more difficult throw for him. He would rather stand in the pocket, anchor his feet, as opposed to being thrown on the move. That's not his play as much as it is Brian Hoyer's, is it? Well, when you get flushed like that, that falls more into what Hoyer, Hoyer's strength is as opposed to Mallard. Second and 10. Short pass over the middle, incomplete. And the whistle looked like he ran out of time on the play clock. Well, and that ball was Prior tipped at the line of scrimmage. Houston takes a timeout. This will be their first timeout. So to avoid the penalty, Houston took a timeout early. The first one used in the game, 11.42 to play in the first. Back to Carolina after this. There's Brian Hoyer, week one starter for the Houston Texans. Second and 10 now for Mountain. Not much offense on display here today. He steps up and throws over the middle and throws low for the tight end, Garrett Graham. So far, minus six total yards on offense for Houston, plus six for Carolina, which adds up to zero total yards for both teams so far today. You know, if you're into defensive football, this is the place to be right now. Uh, neither quarterback has gotten comfortable. Cam Newton's been under pressure on one end of the field, and Ryan Mallett has yet to settle down. That time they're having the tight end across the middle. Start to fire it a little too hard, overstriding and yanking the ball on the ground. Third and ten. Mallett throwing this side and has his man across the 35 and out of bounds at about the 38 or 39-yard line, DeAndre Hopkins. 
Well, and that's just a straight, straight bullet there, Greg. DeAndre is going to get an outside release here, trying to get across Josh Norman's face. He crosses it on the sideline. Mallet has the ability to step up and just throws a laser on the sideline. He, that, that arm strength was on display on that play. Josh Norman told us Hopkins is the bell cow for this offense. New set of downs for Mallet. First down, Texans from their own 38. And Mallet to the near side, and again, that's Hopkins in and out of his hands. And Norman was right there. DeAndre Hopkins played well in the debut last week against Kansas City, tied a career high with nine catches, 98 yards, scored two touchdowns, and also had a two-point conversion. Well, and that's coming off of a big season a year ago, over 1,200 yards receiving. There's his mom there, trying to stay cool. Yeah. He gave us to Chris Polk, and Polk can't get out of the grasp of Kurt Coleman. Polk is their change, change of pace back. They put him on the field. Good receiver out of the backfield. Tends to be an outside the tackles type of runner that time getting a draw up the middle. Third and five. Get man to man down here with Hopkins and Norman. Jumping over the line of scrimmage is number 97, Mario Addison, who had two sacks last week. Offside, defense number 97, unabated the quarterback. It's a five yard penalty, still third down. Mario Addison right here on the edge. He's the one that gets jumped off sides last week having two sacks in the game against Jacksonville. Just a little early. <laughs> Get a little antsy. Wanted, wanted to pick up that third sack of the season. Three penalties last week for Carolina. Three already today. Two tight ends now for Houston on third and one. Chris Polk the beat back, but they give it to the first back through Jake Prosh. And Prosh across midfield and into Carolina territory for a first down. Hey, never miss a moment of football action with the CBS Sports app. Every play, every story, and every highlight right as they happen. Download the CBS Sports app now. Prosh with his first carry of the season gets a first down. At 56 leader now, they still first down. Got a pair. Mallet on the quick slam, looking for Hopkins, and we get a penalty marker flying. Looks like they're going to call Josh Norman on the hold. Hopkins just running the slant route. Prior to the pass, holding defense number 24. It's a five-yard penalty, automatic first down. I'll tell you what, Greg, even from up here, both quarterbacks have had a chance to throw a slant today, and they both are firing it in there. Here at the bottom of your screen, Norman, you can see, gets a, gets a hold of the left shoulder pad of DeAndre Hopkins, and that's what draws the flag. They tend to make that a little bit more catchable ball on the slant. Both guys are trying to fire it in there. That usually means the coverage is too tight to make that throw. Chandler Worthy in the backfield now, but Mallet has no place to throw it, and so he just bounces it off the turf. Things looking very uneven on offense right now for Houston. Well, and you have to remember there's a lot of changes on that offensive line with Dwayne Brown out of the game. Newly added Chris Carr, Clint Chris Clark, uh, just picked up in a trade from Denver, is now playing left tackle. Right tackle Derek Newton is over to left guard. You still have uh, Jones at center and Brooks at right guard, but Jeff Adams is playing right tackle. So you have three of the five offensive linemen have changed from a week ago. The give is to Cecil Shorts the third, and Shorts battles his way to about the Carolina 42 or 43 yard line. See Shorts coming in motion there, and just a quick flip, almost a shovel pass, really. 
You know, last week J.J. Watt lost his helmet on the play. These these Texans have to use a better glue. <laughs> yeah, and he didn't quit on the play. He ended up getting the sack even without the helmet. Third and eight. In the pocket, wide open over the middle. Jonathan Grimes out of the backfield, inside the 30 for a first down. Mallet calling the troops to order. Grimes. To about the 25 yard line. Trying to get in some tempo now, picking up a couple first downs. You can see the Texans are staying up at the line of scrimmage, trying to trying to hurry that tempo up. Doesn't allow the defense to change bodies out. We talked about Sean McDermott liked to change, keeping fresh bodies in on defense. Mallet on the move, throwing. Just misses connections with Nate Washington. Wes Horton applying the pressure for Carolina, coming off the edge. Mallet trying to buy time with his feet, rolling out of the pocket. Washington just with a corner route. He tries drawing the defense to sleep by coming inside and then heading off to the corner. Once again, Mallet on the move is not necessarily the thing he's most comfortable with. Third and six. With Grimes in the backfield once again. You see Hopkins and Norman matched up at the top of the screen again. Mallet, quick pass off the fingertips of Keith Mumphrey, and he was open. Good decision by Mallet going away from that roll coverage. They, they tend to be rolling coverage over towards where Hopkins is if it's not man-to-man. -man. This time Mumphrey sits open right in the middle of the zone. You see the three defenders around him. Good read, good route, just bad execution on squeezing that ball. Yeah, you got to catch that one. Here's Randy Bullock. from 43 yards and it is good so with 7.57 to play in the first the Houston Texans jump on top 3-0 back at Bank of America Stadium in Charlotte 3-0 in favor of the Houston Texans they go 53 yards and 13 plays and Bullock with the 43 yard field goal Bozzy Whitaker is deep along with Joe Webb and no one gets a chance to return this one. The touchback will bring it out to the 20-yard line. Hey, your weekend begins right here with Thursday Night Football on CBS and NFL Network. Washington visits Eli Manning and the New York Giants right here on your home, the Super Bowl 50. CBS Sports. Look at the Giants. They lead that series all time. They've won five of the last six outings. Trey Turner back onto the field at right guard now for Carolina. And Cam Newton trying to avoid another three and out. Newton. Across the 30 for a first down. Cam Newton, Cam Newton with the big first down there on the run, but going back to his first four pass attempts, doesn't have a completion yet. Coming out early, trying to get the ball to Greg Olson. Depps undercuts it. That time just throwing it too hard on the slant route to Ted Ginn, and then the next two pass attempts get tipped at the line of scrimmage. So starting this game off 0 for 4. Newton still looking for that first completion. Pushes it. And being tumbled to the ground is Jonathan Stewart. And that wasn't pretty. Let's get our first update of the day. Back to New York, JB and Coach Cowher. Greg, as you know, turnovers hurt. Yeah, after Terrence West fumble, Isaiah Crowell takes us in from 11 yards out, gives Cleveland a 14-0 lead over Tennessee. Back to Greg, Trent, and Jamie. JB, turnovers hurt us. I know they kill Coach Cowher. <laughs> Loss of three on the play, second and 13. Newton from behind to Debbie and Clowney disrupting that play. He's coming off the edge up top. 
you'll see he, he's able to to beat that pressure or, or beat the block off the edge and Cam trying to get the ball out of his hand and that's the third time now six pass attempts three of them his arms either been hit or the ball's been tipped veteran coach Romeo Cornell the defensive coordinator third and 13 Newton got rid of it in a hurry near side to complete to Philly Brown and Brown across the 30 out to about the 33 or 34 not nearly enough for a first down and the thing that has impressed me about both these defenses is the way they swarm to the football as we got a player injured down on the field. Looks like Jericho Kotchery. Who was in on the blocking on that play. So they will look at him. We will take a timeout with 625 to play in the first quarter. You are watching NFL on CBS, home of Super Bowl 50. And Jericho Cotter is on the right side of your screen there. He's going to fall over the top of his teammate at Dixon. Keith Mumphrey. Touchdown. And a penalty marker flies. Mumphrey hit by Teddy Williams, number 21. Let's see what the penalty is. Do officials get sore arms when the penalty markers fly <laughs> as well? Cleet's being very thorough today. There have been a lot of flags here early on. We've seen a lot of good defense and a lot of penalties. That's, that's how this first quarter has gone so far. During the return, illegal block in the back. Return team number 21. It's a 10-yard penalty. First down, Houston. The penalty is on Daryl Morris. Let's go back to that play that injured Jericho Cotri. You see loading onto the cart there. We'll see Cotri here on the right side of the screen. And watch teammate Ed Dixon as he's trying to get a block here. It's Dixon that falls right into the back right leg of Cotri. who needed help off the field. And we saw right before we went to that, he was uh, getting carted to the locker room. We'll update you as soon as we know. Meanwhile, Patrick Blue. And blew out to about the 17-yard line. I want to remind you that Week 2 continues later today on Fox and then tonight with Sunday Night Football on NBC. Tune in tomorrow for Monday Night Football on ESPN. You get a chance to tell you, Trent, how, how thrilled I was to see that you survived the summer of Deflategate. <laughs> that was brought up over and over and over again. So I think just like everybody else, we're glad that it uh, appears to be over with for now. Chandler Worthy going nowhere. Wrapped up back at the 10 and a couple of penalty markers. While Kyle Love was celebrating, Charles Johnson was depressed. Personal foul, grabbing the face mask. Defense number 95. 15-yard penalty from the previous spot. First down, Houston. Charles Johnson says it's on me. He's given the my bad. Here's Johnson 95 here on the right side of your screen. <laughs> I'd say he That's got That's one it. of those ones. Oops. See the left hand pulling the face mask. He immediately looked at the official like, did you see it? I felt it, but did you see it? Oh, big CJ. And Everybody sure saw it. Five and a half to play here in the first. Quick pass, near side. This is Worthy. And not much of anything, maybe out for about three or four yards. Let's go down to Jamie. Well, Greg, we saw Jericho Cotchery walk off the field, couldn't put any weight on that right foot until he got to the cart. They checked out his right ankle. He is questionable to return. A couple of his teammates walked over, including Greg Olson, to give him some support before he left the field. All right, Jamie, thank you. We'll keep an ear open for Jericho Cotri. This is Alfred Blue, and Alfred Blue cannot spin out of trouble. And he is stacked up at about the 33 and a half yard line. Good commitment by Kirk Coleman. See him there on the screen. He's 
came up in run support once he saw the tight end block. That's who he was lined up over in man-to-man -man coverage. As soon as he saw Fedorowicz go into a blocking stance, then he came on the pressure and was able to make that tackle. This is a game in need of some offense by someone. Third and seven. Mallet throws and hits Jonathan Grimes out of the backfield. And a late flag. One, two, three, four flags. Personal foul. Unnecessary roughness. Defense number 58. A late hit on the runner. 15 yards. We end the run. First down, Houston. You know, if you could grab Thomas Davis and tell him, you know, one ref might be wrong, but, but four flags flying, it was kind of a, a given. Especially when you hit to the head or neck area. Here the player is already down. See Davis come flying in, put that right shoulder right into Grimes' chin pretty much as he's laying on the ground. That is the third first down by penalty for the Houston Texans. Mallet, deep drop. Down the sideline, looking for Hopkins. Incomplete the goal line. Covered by Norman with a little help from Roman Harper, the safety. So you got Harper in the middle of the field. It's it's man-to-man -man coverage. You'll see Hopkins is here. Right back here is Harper. He's gonna try getting back. Mallet comes back off the play fake. You watch the arm strength he has. His feet aren't really set. He's falling to his left, and he's just able to flick that ball out of there. Good 55, 60 yards. Second and 10. Offensive coordinator George Godsey, you see right there on the sideline. Mallet. Throwing. A little miscommunication on the far side. Charles Tillman almost came up with the interception pass intended from Mumphrey. It'll be third and ten. And that time there, I believe Mallet just misses on the back side here. You're going to see Josh Norman. He's going to come on the pressure over here, and then you're going to have an out route. When you have that type of pressure coming from the back side, you can see on the front it's a zone. Here you have an open receiver on the back side. That's being aware from a protection standpoint it was picked up by the back. But that's just Mallet being aware with that rotation and that coverage. He's got the one-on-one -on, -one on the back side. Third and ten for the Texans. Screen. Grimes. And Grimes forward to about the 41. That'll be about five yards shy of a first down. And no sign of the punting unit coming on yet. We talked about this with, with Coach O'Brien about his decisions of when you want to be risky and it's calculated risk. How do you feel? He obviously feels very confident in what his defense is doing to be able to, to go forward at this position of the field. Fourth and five. They need the 36-yard line for a first down. Watch the combination of players up here. You have a bunch formation. You have three players together. That causes confusion by the defense if you can pick somebody off. Out of the backfield is Grimes, and he is about two yards short of a first down. Shaq Thompson, the first-round draft pick out of Washington, made the hit. So with that, the ball will go over on downs. That drive cut short, and Carolina in possession when we come back. You look at the Panthers' first three possessions. What does that tell you, Trent? That tells you why Bill O'Brien went for it on fourth down at the uh, the 41-yard line. It's having that confidence in his defense, the way they've been able to get Carolina off the field. Carolina had great time of possession in their opener last week, more than 34 minutes. They've had, but in their first three possessions, they've possessed the football for 24 seconds, a minute 19, and a minute 32. Cam Newton now on first down. Play fake. Lots and lots and lots of time. And now Newton takes off and dives across the 40, out to about the 42-yard line. Clock continues to move 240 to play here in the first quarter. And this is what this is where Houston, you're gonna go, they're gonna go deep here, but Houston, they're only gonna rush four guys on their defensive front and drop seven into coverage. They typically 
So you've got four guys here in the rush, but then look at all these bodies back here in coverage. You've only, you've only got three receivers. On second and six, the give is to Stewart. Stewart shakes the tackle at the 40 and is out of bounds just as he crosses midfield and into Houston territory at the 48-yard line. Run out of bounds by Justin Tuggle. Well, I'm finishing up with my last thought. That was a good decision by Cam Newton to run the football, not force it downfield. This time on the draw play to Stewart, he's able to break contain and get outside and pick up the first down. Cam Newton, two carries for 15 yards so far today, and this is Stewart. Stewart. Shaking another tackler in the backfield, but then hit hard as he approached the 45-yard line. Tuesday, it's a matchup you don't want to miss. Stephen Colbert goes one-on-one -on -one with Donald Trump this Tuesday on The Late Show with Stephen Colbert. We are in the last minute and a half of the first quarter. Mike Tober in the backfield with Newton on second and seven. Cam goes for a little walk in the backfield, a little play fake, and now he throws to the sideline, and that is complete to the tight end, Greg Olson. Out of bounds about a yard short of a first down. And Cam Newton was hit low that time by J.J. Watt. It looks like he's going to get blocked into it. Actually, it wasn't Watt. It was John Simon coming off that side. Officials are pretty protective of quarterbacks' legs, but when they're blocked down into it, they're not going to make that call. Good, accurate throw with someone all over him. Forward progress was marked at the 38, which is enough for a first down. So the Panthers knocking on the door. Straight drop for Newton. He's going to go for it all down the far side of the field. Caught! And out of bounds. Ted Ginn, Jr. Even though Cam's eyes weren't over there from the beginning of the play, he knew he had man-to-man -man coverage based on the rotation. Here you have Ginn one-on-one with Jackson going down the left sideline. As soon as Newton leaves from center, he notices safety in the middle of the field. He knows what his route is. It's already built in. Keeping his eyes, keeping that safety to the middle of the field and taking a shot down the sideline. Second and ten. Setting up the screen and that almost blew up in his face to Mike Tolbert and Bernardrick McKinney. The rookie linebacker out of Mississippi State was right there. What a great read by McKinney. That ball almost could have been a pick six with the way that Cam Newton flowed this ball. You're going to see McKinney coming here from the middle of the field. He reads it. He reads it. Newton has to just plop it up over the top of the rushers, really have nothing on it. Heck of a play by the young man out of Mississippi State. Makes it a third and 13 for Carolina. And we will come to the end of the first quarter before the snap. We played one here in Carolina. 3-0 Houston. Greg Gumbel, Trent Green, Jamie Erdahl back in Charlotte. We're all in agreement that neither team is burning up the offensive numbers. Third and 13. Newton with good protection. Over the middle, in and out of the hands of Ted Ginn Jr. And that time, Newton was right on target. Well, he, he's beating Jonathan Joseph. Ginn is just on a dig route. You see this ball hits him right in the chest. He jumps up, and instead of catching it with his hands, he jumps up and tries to catch it with his body. That's ultimately what leads to the ball hitting his shoulder pads or the chest plate of his shoulder pads and causing the ball to bounce off. That's really that's so, really the first time Cam Newton's had an opportunity to throw the ball downfield cleanly. The other times he's been under pressure or the guys have been covered. Brad Nortman trying to plant this one inside the five-yard line and takes. Let's see, it'll be marked into the end zone. So it did cross the goal line and came out for the touchback. And that means that Houston will start from its own 20-yard line.
You can watch the ball as it just crosses right on the goal line there. Had the right bounce on it. <laughs> Look at that shot. Aerial coverage of today's game provided by Met Life. I was proud of you. We get to North Carolina, you get to whip out your accent a little bit, <laughs> work on that. We got some barbecue around here, too. Yeah, they might. Chris Polk on the carry for a yard. It'll be second and nine. Kyle Love with the tackle. Here's Mallon, some of his early throws. You can see when he sets his feet, he's got a strong arm and he's accurate. This next one, he has a little too much heat on it. But he's more productive when he's able to anchor his feet in there and, and, and fire the football as opposed to moving around, and that's been evident here, or at least up through now in the first quarter. They'll give it to Polk again, and Polk out to about the 25 for pickup of four, and it'll be third and five. Kirk Coleman up from the secondary. Well, George Godsey told us, the offensive coordinator for the Texans told us, Last week against Kansas City, falling behind the way they did, they don't want, they don't want to throw the ball 50 times a game. They didn't want to put the ball in the air that much. That's just the, the necessity because of the way that game was going. They'd like to have some balance, and they're having a hard time today running the football as well. Houston has run the ball eight times, thrown at 17 so far today, and now it's a throw here. And that pass, making the diving catch on the far side, is DeAndre Hopkins. Now, Josh Norman says, uh, take a look at that. I don't think so. You know, I'm all the way on the other side of the stadium, and, and I know that official's 10 yards away from him, but it looked to me like it hit the ground from way over here. But And on that replay, it looked the same. So Ron Rivera is going to challenge this. You know, that looked a lot like a Steph Curry dribble. <laughs> Carolina is challenging the ruling on the field of a completed catch. So they'll take a look. We'll take a break. You're watching the NFL on CBS, the home of Super Bowl 50. As we take another look, we get to say hello for the first time today to Mike Carey, our officiating expert. What'd you think, Mike? Hey, Greg. Well, the rule is if the ball hits the ground before the receiver has control, it's incomplete. You can see the receiver may have had his hand over a portion of the ball under it, but the ball clearly hits the ground. This is an obvious clear reversal. This is an obvious layup for Mike Carey. Do you realize that? <laughs> we got to bring Mike in for I the tougher ones. <laughs> All right, Mike, thank you. <laughs> that's right, that's right. After review of the play, the ball hit the ground prior to the game of control. So Mike Carey is 1-0 so far. Well, I think Cleet was uh, under the hood maybe uh, listening to Mike's analysis <laughs> yeah. on that. I think that was uh, that was pretty clear. The key is the key. Even you would have got this. <laughs> <laughs> the key is they got it right. All right, Mike, thank you. Fourth and five. Hey, go! And Shane Leckler, 16th year in the league. 6'2", 237 from Texas A&M, and he has been one of the great putters for a long time. Look at this one, all the way back to the 14-yard line. Ted Ginn, Jr. Back out across the 25 to the 26. Only one more day until the biggest premiere in the universe. You won't want to miss the first new episode of the season, The Big Bang Theory, on its new night, tomorrow at 8, 7 Central, here on CBS. Down to Jamie Erdahl. Greg, we saw Jericho Cotri, the wide receiver, leave the game earlier with a right ankle injury. He was evaluated. He just came out, ran a couple 15 yards up and down the sideline, said he was okay, and now he's back on the field for the Panthers offense. Thank you, Jamie. He's not only been evaluated, he's been rejuvenated. That's a, that's a big surprise. Good to see him back out on the field. First down, Newton and the Panthers. Newton on the move. Has a first down and more and run out of bounds across the 40 to the 41-yard line. Let's get another update from the NFL Today in New York. JB in the coach.
Hey, Greg, here's the evaluation. Big, bad, and unstoppable. Yeah, Rob Gronkowski, who do you cover him with? The DB can't cover him here, right here. Second touchdown pass for Tom Brady. 21-7, New England over Buffalo. Hey, Greg, and you were right earlier. Coach hates turnovers. Back to Greg Gumbo. Oh. Show me a coach that isn't crazy over turnovers. Newton. Throwing. Sideline. Complete. And that's the tight end, Greg Olson. How about the sly smile on Cam Newton's face when you ask him if you think you might throw to Greg Olson a little more today than you did last week? Well, he gives us one of those looks like, I'm not going to tell you, but I think my look will tell you. And uh, pretty clear that they're trying to get him the football. Been targeted several times today. And that's a better route for him to run. The other one, Dimps was sitting all over. It was more of a hitch route. That one, it's a runaway route. The give is to Stewart. Stewart run away at the middle, inside the 40 to about the 37 and a half yard line. Good job up front. You'll see Stewart here on the handoff, just a counter play, following his block through the middle. Created a big lane for him. Some of this could be the fact that the Texans defense has been on the field for so long. Second and short yardage here now for Newton with Tolbert in the backfield. Tolbert with the ball and has the first down and a lot more. 30, 25. Brought down by Kareem Jackson, the quarterback. It's about discipline within the defense, maintaining your rush lanes and keeping leverage. That time on the back side, the defense collapsed, allowing Tolbert to cut back and find an opening. Forty-nine yard drive, and you see how that compares with their first four drives. Newton going for it all. Ends on wide open. Touchdown. Ted Ginn Jr. The Texans attempt to bring pressure. Rushing five this time, they don't get to Cam Newton. Allowing the one-on-one -on, -one on the outside, a double move. A double move by Ted Ginn Jr. There's Ginn here. Gonna go up to a hitch and a little twirl with that type of protection in the pocket. Cam Newton's able to put it right into the corner. He beat A.J. Boyer on the play. The extra point is good. Cam Newton. His second touchdown pass of the season. And the Panthers are up 7-3. And that's what happens on uh, off days. <laughs> the U.S. National Whitewater Center. Here in Charlotte, North Carolina. Cam Newton. First four drives, he went 4 of 11, throwing for a total of 7 yards. And on that last drive, 2 out of 2 for 37 yards, including... The 25-yard touchdown pass. 7-3 Panthers. Quinton Demps deep. And an onside kick. Almost looked like a, uh, like a mistake. Jonathan Grimes covered it for Houston. Let's see. Graham Gano. Did he pull up at the last second? I'm guessing it's a re-kick because uh. the ball fell off the tee in the... Good thing the official was on top of it. Well, what was the magnitude of that earthquake <laughs> that hit? <laughs> that uh, he had a little tilt on the ball anyway, but clearly it fell off the tee. There's no wind. And this one will go out of the end zone for the touchback. Let's go back to that touchdown pass. Well, I want you to tell you, uh, show you what Cam Newton is looking at. Here, here you have all guys up at the line of scrimmage. You have a defender rushing. Cam Newton is going to use his eyes up the field on this safety who's going to be one-on-one. -on -one. But then you got Ted Ginn here who's just running an up-and-go. So 
you see all of the things that are going on with the defense, that's what Cam Newton is focused in on. He realizes when the pressure comes that he's got man-to-man -man on the outside. Once he realizes his guys pick up that pressure, that's when he knows he's going to be able to celebrate because he's got the one-on-one -on -one and has the time to make that throw. Mallet back to work now, throwing, and he's got the man complete across the 35 and close to the 40-yard line. That's tight end C.J. Fedorowicz. That's good for a first down at the 39. Well, and play action passing allows that to happen when you can get some run game going, get a little bit of things going on the ground, it gets those linebackers to bite up and you can hit that tight end in that second window. Mallet from the shotgun. Quick pass over the middle and that is incomplete. Intended for Garrett Graham, the other tight end. A reminder for you, replay every game of the 2015 season on demand with NFL Game Pass. Go to NFL.com slash Game Pass to start your free trial. Well, that was all the pocket being pushed back into Mallet's face. There's only four guys rushing. Everybody drops into coverage. He wanted to anchor down in there, and that's what happened. Somebody got in his face. He wasn't able to make an accurate throw. Mallet throwing sideline, almost intercepted. Josh Norman going up high, looking for his second of the season. Well, that's a little cat and mouse by defensive coordinator Sean McDermott showing five guys at the line of scrimmage like they're going to throw or they're like they're going to blitz. So Mallet thinks he has man-to-man -man coverage on the outside. But in reality, you see by the way Norman is playing the ball, looking back at the quarterback, he knows he has help over the top. That allows him to cheat on that route and almost get the interception. Third and ten. Look for the Panthers to drop in coverage with a shell here. Now on the move again. Shakes one tackler and is run out of bounds at about the 34 or 33 yard line. Charles Johnson and Dewan Edwards giving chase. Once again, we go back. We've been talking about it with the Texans. We can also talk about it with Carolina's defense. When you can rush four, drop seven into coverage, and still apply the pressure, that's where you're giving yourself a huge advantage. Ted Ginn Jr., he of the touchdown reception back inside his own 15-yard line for the kick. And he grabs it at the 22. Across the 35. Out to about the 40-yard line. Ten oh five to play in the first half. Ryan Mallett down by the ankle. 7-3. Panthers. And Charles Johnson is going to come off the edge here, and he's just going to come right up the middle as they do this TE stunt. You'll see he comes clean. As a quarterback, you're fine with pressure off the edges because you can step up in the pocket. But when pressure comes up the middle and you're forced to flush, it takes away all your reads and all your progressions, and that doesn't fit well with what Mallet likes to do. On first down, this is Jonathan Stewart. And Stewart for about two across the 40 to the 41-yard line. Jadavian Clowney all excited about playing in front of the home folks. He's from Rock Hill, South Carolina, just 27 miles away. And South Point High School, he played offense, defense, special teams, the number one consensus player in the nation coming out of high school. He ran the ball 32 times for 277 yards and nine touchdowns. Meanwhile, this is Jericho Cotchery. And Cotchery, his mark down across midfield. This was the read option, but with, with the option part of it. So here he's able to fake out Clowney. Then he's able to get up to that next level, just back to the old college option play. Against Justin Tuggle in the backfield, and Kotcher is able to pick up the first down. So now the Panthers in Houston territory again. Newton, this side of the field. And a bullet complete to Ted Ginn, Jr. That was a bullet, Greg, and, and the thing to point out there with Ted Ginn, what he did that time is he caught the ball with his hands instead of jumping and trying to catch it with his chest, which is where the ball bounced off before that time. He just reached up, trusted his hands, and was able to bring it in. Kind of feels like someone has alerted the offense that the game has begun. Ginn throws this side again, and again it's Ginn. Out of bounds. Just shy of the 35-yard line, but enough for another first down. 
Well, and if Jonathan Joseph continues to play off coverage, they'll just take those little five and seven yarders all the way up and down the field. Newton has completed six in a row now. Looking for seven in a row. He's got it. Far side of the field. Complete to Philly Brown. Down to the 21-yard line and a first down. Give credit to this offensive line. Watch the protection. You're going to see Philly Brown out here. He's just going to go and hang out in this area out here. He just floats to the outside, but it's the protection that gives Cam Newton the time and gives Brown the time to get open on that far sideline. From the 21, oh, Newton with a quick snap. And a penalty marker flies. Well, yeah, they, they're going to call Cam for moving forward. Illegal motion. Offense, number one. It's a five-yard penalty. Still first down. He looked like he was coming to the line to make an adjustment and got the snap. It's very rarely called. Will you see, will you see that called on a quarterback? Here, you're going to see Cam, and he'll start working towards the line of scrimmage. Looks like he's going to change the play or attempt to change the player protection. A lot of times when the ball is snapped quickly, there won't be any penalty at all because you're... You're just catching everybody else off guard, but the fact because he was moving forward, that's why that penalty was called. So it's first and 15. Play fake to Stewart. Newton, lots and lots of time, and now he's going to run it. And close to the original line of scrimmage, we have a penalty marker in the secondary. Looks like they're going to call a hold. Going to get it on Kareem Jackson, I believe. Kotri's covering Norwood. Holding. Defense, number 25. It's a five yard penalty from the end of the run. First down, Carolina. It is on Kareem Jackson. Well, Kareem Jackson, you'll see right here, is on Norwood. Norwood's just going to make a double move and try and get outside, and you'll see Jackson reach his arm around. That's what's going to be called the hold right there as he wraps him up. He had help over the top, so there was no need for him to grab him. Newton, throw it. Knocked down at the 10-yard line, intended for Olsen, batted down by Raheem Moore, the safety. Well, and this one's on Cam Newton. He stares him down. He's staring down Greg Olson, and that's why Raheem Moore is able to read the eyes and know where he wants to go. If, if Cam had gotten rid of that ball a little bit quicker, that could have been a completion, but with the amount of time that Moore had, now we're getting into second and ten. Look for a run play to get it set up for a better third down. Jonathan Stewart. Two about the 13. As we come up on six and a half minutes to play here in the first half of a 7-3 game. You know, Greg, I just saw Clowney come running back on the field. It made me think of that high school highlight you just showed. How about that as a running back? If you're a high school defender and you see him as a running back coming running through. It's just not fair. It's not, it's not fair at all. Look for him Watts to be coming off the edges here. Let's see what Newton has in mind on third and seven. Under pressure. Escapes the pressure. On the move. Diving forward to the 10-yard line. How about the respect that two of those carry? Both Watt and Clowney were double teamed on this pass rush, and both of them were able to push the double team back into Cam Newton, ultimately force him to flush. Brian Cushing in on the stop, and Cam looking a little disturbed. Field goal attempt upcoming by Graham Gano. From 28 yards out. Good. 5.26 to play, first half. The Panthers stretch their lead to 10-3. Welcome back to Charlotte. 10-3, Carolina. Leading the Houston Texans, 51-yard drive in just over four and a half minutes, resulting in the field goal. Only 83 degrees, players are reacting as if it's a lot hotter. And this is Chandler Worthy, he's gonna run it out. Worthy, 
as penalty markers fly. He comes up short of the 20-yard line. David Mayo with the tackle. During the return, illegal block in the back. Defense, number 35. Penalties half the distance to the goal line. First down, Houston. That penalty on Eddie Pleasant. It'll back the Texans up. Give us a chance to tell you Saturday. The SEC on CBS brings on the best game from the best conference. The Tennessee Volunteers tangle with the Florida Gators. And it all begins with college football today, right here on CBS Sports. Mallet on first down. Oh! Batted down as soon as it left his hand by Tony Ely, the defensive end. Getting quick pressure up the field, trying to hit the swing route. Right here, he's just going to try hitting the swing route, but Ely gets up field. Almost close to a backward pass, which would have been a quick touchdown for the Panthers, but that ball was moving forward. Carolina dominating control of the football here in the second quarter. On second and ten, the give is to Polk, Chris Polk. Just across the ten-yard line. We were talking about it during the break, Trent, that Ryan Mallett needs to complete some passes, get some first downs, and give that Houston defense a chance to rest. Well, Greg, you just showed the time of possession for this quarter, and, and even though you showed the temperature at 83 degrees, it's much hotter down on the field with the humidity and that's tight end CJ Fedorowicz having trouble staying on his feet he is a second year tight end out of Iowa almost looks like he's Cramping? Well, they're messing with his knee no, there. Knee. At first, initially, I thought maybe he was cramping. But we talked about time of possession, Greg, and, and just in the second quarter, the amount of time that the, uh, the Texans' defense has been on the field. You can see that last series, it seemed like they were getting pushed around a little bit, which they hadn't been doing prior in this game. Yeah, no one usually pushes the Houston defense around. Well, there was a couple times where they had cutback runs where, you know, either the linebackers overflowed or the, the gap responsibility had broken down. And that's what allowed them to get that. Uh... Let's take a look and see what happened to C.J. Fedorowicz, number 87, right, right in the middle of your screen. Let's see. Oh, here he is right here. Let's see what happens here as they... Looked like it already happened as Norman maybe was pressing up against him. Oh, there he gets bent back over the pile as it leaves the screen there. So Fedorowicz limps off the field. That leaves tight end duties to Garrett Graham and on occasion, as we have seen, T.J. Watt. Meanwhile, Mallet faced with a third and nine and trying to keep the drive alive. Steps up, throws, incomplete. Off the hands of Nate Washington, defended by Charles Tillman, and another flag is down. Illegal use of hands, hands to the face, offense number 70. That penalty's declined. Brings up fourth down. That penalty is on Jeff Adams. Someone does a nice job of knocking that ball out. Here we're going to get the hands of the face. Coming off that edge. See Charles Johnson's head was tilting back on that. Here's Ted Ginn Jr. Breaks it to the near side. And out of bounds at midfield. 4.33 to play in the first half. Carolina with the lead in the football again. A reminder, coming up, the Verizon Halftime Report. JV 
and the guys for all the latest scores and highlights back in the studio in New York. They'll have a preview of Thursday Night Football on CBS and the NFL Network. It's all coming up on the Verizon Halftime Report. So, yeah, we touched a little bit on deflate gate and just uh, did, did it amaze you how people just lost their minds all <laughs> summer long? Yes, it was, it was a topic of discussion for a long time, obviously going back and forth with the league and the Players Association and Tom Brady and what was going on with uh, obviously the court system now is what it ultimately came down to. But glad we're, glad we're back to football now. And Newton Crowley and incomplete. J.J. Watt in on Cam Newton. Been happening with number 99 today. Well, they've been double teaming him quite a bit. You can see here two offensive linemen occasionally here with Dixon being a tight end. They get a tight end in the mix, and every now and then they'll be crazy enough to put a running back on him, but that hasn't <laughs> that hasn't fared too well for him. So you see the big boys staying on him most of the time. Second and ten. Newton got his man inside the 40-yard line to the 35. Catch is made by Devin Funches, the rookie out of Michigan. This time Newton recognizes the fact that they're, they're going to bring Demps off the edge. Demps comes down at safety. He comes off the edge. You've got Ginn one-on-one -on, -one on the backside. Once again, watch Ginn catch it with his hands. The drop earlier was just... Oh, I'm sorry. It was Funches with the catch. Catching it with his hands, bringing it in, not allowing the defensive back to knock it out. Newton. Far side of the field, and that is complete inside the 25-yard line, out of bounds at the 23 for the first down to Greg Olson. Olson already seeing lots more action than he did a week ago. Olson one-on-one -on -one there in the slot with Jackson. Gets over to the sideline, and what I see right now is the Texans defense that is walking around. They seem very tired, very sluggish. After that completion, getting back to the line of scrimmage, See a lot of them with hands on hips, taking deep breaths. J.J. Watt working extra hard with the double team. On first down, quick pass to the sideline, Olsen again. Cut down by Kevin Johnson, the rookie cornerback out of Wake Forest. Cam Newton distributing the ball. Well, oh, look at that already. Last week, Olsen only had three targets and one catch. Today, he already has four receptions. Newton with time. Over the middle. Tipped. Intercepted at the goal line. Picked off by Raheem Moore. Moore back to the 15. Lost the football. Covered by the Texans. Justin Tuggle was there to pick up the loose ball. And that ball wasn't the tightest spiral as he was attempting to get the ball to Kevin Norwood. Oh, his arm was hit. Yep. So this ball comes out wobbly, and Norwood gets his hands on it. And this will be an automatic review on the turnover, but it appears Raheem Moore got his hands underneath that. Who was it that hit? that hit uh, Cam Newton's arm. Was it J.J. Watt? They are continuing to take a look upstairs. Jared Crick was the one that came through, the, the defensive lineman that was able to get come through and hit Cam Newton's arm, causing that ball to flutter out. So the turnover is confirmed, and here is Ryan Mallett. Mallett. With time over the middle, Grimes out of the backfield and out to about the 31 yard line. Real quick back to the pressure. Here's Crick, he's going to be the one that comes out. Watt on the outside, they end up just doing a push in the pocket. Crick comes off, and he's the one that hits uh, Newton's arm, causing that ball to flutter in the air and ultimately go off the hands of Kevin Norwood. Grimes on second and one, looking for the first down, and appears to have it as we come up on two minutes to play. Two minutes to play when we come back in the first half. Carolina with the lead. Houston with the ball. NFL Network all coming up on the Verizon Halftime Report.
Houston with two first downs remaining. Carolina with all three of theirs. Mallet. Grimes. And Grimes knocked out of bounds at about the 38-yard line by Roman Harper. I said first downs. I meant two timeouts remaining. That time there, Grimes being able to get out of bounds. Being hit by Roman Harper on the sidelines. Good decision by Mallet, not forcing the ball to the field. He knows he has a minute four, minute 54. He does have the two timeouts, as you said, Greg. Plenty of time to keep and continue to hit the underneath routes, not having to force it up the field at this time. And now Carolina takes a timeout. So they use their first timeout, and they also now have two timeouts remaining. Let's talk Super Bowl. The Carolina Panthers played in Super Bowl 38 down in Houston, and they took on the New England Patriots back and forth. Game Tom Brady and Jake DeLone both throwing for over 300 yards and three touchdowns at the end. Came down to Adam Vinatieri, 41 yards out with four seconds to play. And gave New England a 32 to 29 win. That was Carolina's only Super Bowl appearance in its 21st year of the franchise now. Cam Newton wants to get him there. Second and six. Mallet. High pass. Along his receiver, Jonathan Grimes, out to dry, incomplete. Well, and Grimes not only took a big hit, but he also saved an interception. This ball coming out too high. You can see the defender that ultimately, Davis ultimately puts the hit on Grimes. He's the one that would have had the interception had Grimes not been able to, uh, to put a hand on that. Third and six. And Carolina looks like calling another timeout. They do. They use their second. This is what happened with Luke Keekley, the middle linebacker for Carolina last week, suffering the concussion after the hit on Jaguars running back T.J. Yeldon late in the first half. And they were hopeful right up until Friday that he might be able to get back. He was not. Those are the rest of the inactives today. And you can tell this, this Houston offense really misses Arian Foster. Kind of. Well, they've tried to do a combination of backs, and it just hasn't worked out up until this point. Third and six for Mallet. Under the gun, throwing over the middle. And it bounced short of the intended receiver, Nate Washington. Well, Mario Addison was putting the pressure coming off the edge for the Carolina Panthers, hitting Mallet as he was throwing. You'll see Addison coming off the top up here. He's the one that just beats Chris Clark off the snap, and Mallet has to throw that ball sooner than he wants to and really can't get anything into it. Ted Ginn Jr. calling for the fair catch, and he makes that catch at about the 14-yard line. 138 to play here in the first half. And Carolina with one timeout remaining, and offense, there hasn't been much to talk about on either side of the ball. Carolina's looked a little better as the game has progressed. Carolina got into some rhythm there uh, here in the second quarter, and, and that's really, when you look at those yards and those numbers, a, a lot of it is reflective of what, what has gone on here in the, uh, in the second quarter. That first quarter, what they have, about seven yards, ten yards? I mean, it was a three and out, three and out, four and out, so it wasn't uh, very productive, but they've, they've figured things out, whereas Houston is still trying to come up with something to get the ball moving, get some points on the board. Ozzie Whitaker in the background, but that pass is knocked down by 99. A.J. Watt. I would think they'd have watched enough film by now to know that Watt's going to jump up. and You know, he's uh, he's been known. He's all the way up here at the top, coming off the edge. and He's been known to jump up and snag these out of the air, too, not just bat them down, but catch them and 
go that eight yards or whatever it was into the end zone that he needed to just trot in. So be careful when throwing that play that way. On second and ten, this is Whitaker. Remember when we were talking with Cam Newton yesterday, he said, would you, would you prefer to run at J.J. Watt or away from him? And he said, neither one to tell you the truth. <laughs> neither way. He said either he's going to hit you at the point of attack or he's going to catch you from behind. You can see last season among all defensive linemen how many categories he was first in. Picking up right where he left off. Last week having six tackles for loss. And that was just defensively. Had five touchdowns that he scored last year, three of them on offense, and a safety, and five fumble recoveries. Oh, and by the way, he's 290, <laughs> and he does all that. So pretty impressive for uh, for J.J. Watt. Third and seven now. Each team down to one timeout remaining. Newton, deep. Down this side, way overthrown. Ted Ginn Jr., the intended receiver. Well, and that was the pressure that was applied from the Texans that time, forcing Cam to throw that ball earlier than he wanted. Not allowing Ginn to get the separation. The timing just wasn't right, so Cam had to flick it down the sideline. It's amazing when you say you flick it down the side. He flicked it down the sideline about 60, 65 yards. Nice flick. Yeah. Keith Mumford with a chance to return this one. Drifts back to his own 17-yard line. Near side of the field and out of bounds at about the 30-yard line. That'll bring the Carolina defense onto the field, and that includes Thomas Davis back in January. Davis was named the 2014 NFL Man of the Year for his work in the community and for playing excellence. To the guys in this league, I just want to say to you, let's change this world. We're well compensated for what we do. Let's show these kids how much we care about them. Let's give the media something positive to talk about instead of always bashing our league. Thomas Davis, good man. He's a pleasure getting to, getting to talk to him yesterday in our production meeting. First down from Allen. Not only as a player, but as a person, as you say, that. Over the middle, complete. And that is Fozzie Whitaker walking off to the locker room early. Well, and there's someone down for the Texans, and they're all waving to the sideline. That is number 70, Jeff Adams the second-year offensive lineman from Columbia. And he looks to be in agony. Yeah, it's his, it's his right knee is what he's grabbing as he's going to the ground. You don't want to speculate too much, but he, he obviously is in a lot of pain as you see him. So he's lined up right here. Ely's going to be coming off the edge. You can, say, you can see during the pass rush, he just goes down and grabs that, that right leg. Kind of looked like it buckled on him. Yeah, he planted as he, as he was backpedaling, trying to plant that leg. You could see him plant that right foot to try and uh, anchor in and immediately uh, hopped up on the one foot and, and grabbed that right leg. So, unfortunately, they're bringing the cart out on the field. And, and as if this Houston offensive line wasn't in enough disarray. They had some major shuffling up front with Wayne Brown, the regular left tackle, being deactivated. And now Jeff Adams about to be carted off. Chris Clark, who they just traded for with Denver a few weeks ago, was filling in for Brown at the left tackle spot. Adams, as we saw in that last replay, was playing right tackle because they moved Derek Newton, the normal right tackle, over to left guard. So 
Seems like such a game of chance up front there, Trent, because last week we got a look at Joe Thomas, the fine left tackle for the Cleveland Browns, and this is his ninth year in the NFL, and he's never missed an offensive snap, not one. Well, I have so much respect for those guys up front and the job that they do and the wear and tear that their body goes through. And when you see a guy like Joe Thomas, a guy that I played with for many years in Kansas City, just went in the Hall of Fame, Will Shields, he was a, another player that had 234 consecutive starts. You see those guys and you see the way that they're able to, uh, well, you know, what they put their bodies through. And you obviously feel for Jeff Adams as he's getting put on the cart and his teammates are all rallying around him and uh, showing their support. Teammates paying tribute to Jeff Adams and the opposition keeping their distance, but still you can tell it affects them too. Well, it is. They all know the amount of work that's put into this. You, you, know, you don't want to see anybody get hurt. And they all spend an entire offseason getting their bodies ready and see a serious injury like that, it, it affects everybody. Meanwhile, Kendall Lamb, a rookie free agent offensive lineman out of Appalachian State, has come onto the field. Second and 10, 67 seconds left here in the first half. 58 to Mike, 58. One minute, go. Now throwing. Almost intercepted at the 45-yard line. Number 25, Benaben Wickery. Drew a bead on it and couldn't hold on. Mallon once again was under pressure, not able to step into this throw as the pocket collapses around him. Then Wickery is just kicking himself. You see him put his hands on his head, knowing he had a perfect chance for an interception. Mario Addison was the one pushing Chris Clark back into Mallet's face. Third and ten. Got a hurry. Didn't get off in a hurry. Delay a game. Offense. Five yard penalty. Still third down. So Bill O'Brien is going to have to address the offensive struggles at halftime. Well, and I don't know how you fix it. You only have so many offensive linemen that are healthy, so you've got bodies in there, but, you know, it's, it's a matter of having the time to do something with it. This is Polk, and Polk just across the 25-yard line. You know, Carolina's going to use that last time out to try and preserve as much time as they can. Again, being one of the better punt returners in the National Football League. Ron Rivera said one of the problems, even in the opening game win at Jacksonville, was that his team didn't start quickly, and he would like to see that. They didn't start very quickly <laughs> today either. <laughs> they didn't start quickly today, but but for them, Houston didn't start quickly either. So we kind of uh, worked our way through that first quarter. would be a nice way to put it. Now in the second quarter, Carolina's been able to get some things going, but there's still some area of concern there for the Texans. Leckler booms one out of there. This is Gill. We have a penalty mark. And Ginn cut down as he crosses the 25-yard line. Penalty marker thrown on the near side of the field. I think the officials are going to ice their arms at halftime. They may need to. They don't just call the flag. They get together and discuss it, which is, you know, they want to get it right, but it's definitely made for a longer first half. During the kick, holding, return team number 25. Tony's half the distance to the goal line for the end of the kick. First down, Carolina. So that penalty is on Ben Wickery. 46 seconds on the clock. Carolina by a touchdown. Do they look for more here? Or do they go to the locker room with a one touchdown lead? Well, I think based on the penalty and the fact now they're down inside their 10-yard line, I think it's more of a uh, 
traditional hand the ball off, kind of run the clock out. Don't take any chances down this close to run end zone. And they will give it to Tolbert. And Tolbert out to the 20-yard line, and that's a first down. And you can see Carolina's not necessarily hurrying up to the ball. They just want to get some separation from the end zone. They don't have to run another snap if they don't want to. Let's see if Cam Newton takes a knee here. I was going to hand it off to Tolbert. And that will do it for the first half. So the offensive guns not out in force in the first half as the final seconds tick off the clock. The Houston Texans manage a field goal. Carolina, a field goal and a touchdown. And at the break, the Carolina Panthers with the lead by a score of 10 to 3. And let's go down to Jamie. Well, Coach, in his third career NFL start, how do you feel like Ryan Mallett fared? Uh, the whole team, we just got to play better. You know, it's a 10-3 game, you know, 10-3 game, you know, another half of football. So we just got to go in there, make some adjustments, and come out ready to go. Cam Newton is certainly a challenging quarterback, but have you contained him the way you want to? Yeah, you know, he's, he's going to make his plays. He's a great player, and like I said, we're going to go in there, make some adjustments, come out and play a good second half. Coach, thanks. Yep. Jamie, thank you. And we have come to the end of the first half here at Bank of America Stadium in Charlotte. That is the end of the first half. 10-3 in favor of Carolina. We're back with the Verizon Halftime Report after this message. And a word from your local station. You're watching the NFL on CBS, the home of Super Bowl 50. Back to Charlotte as we await the start of the second half. Carolina with a 10-3 lead on the Houston Texans. Let's take a look at the DirecTV ultimate picture cam. The lone touchdown of the day came from the arm of Cam Newton. He finds Ted Ginn Jr. in the back of the end zone. That's the only touchdown we've seen so far this afternoon. 10-3 Panthers. Greg Gumbel along with Trent Green. We heard Bill O'Brien, the Houston head coach, uh, tell Jamie Erdahl that they have to go in and make some adjustments. What kind of adjustments do you make for Ryan Mallett, who's only com who's only making a 2.3 yard per completion? Well, they have problems with protection on the offensive line, so there's two directions of thought here. You can either add more guys to protection and only put a couple receivers out, or you're going to get more guys in to protect and only have a couple receivers out. But let's look at the second half here. For Houston, you have to find a way to protect Mallett. You have to find a way to keep him upright and, and be able to step into his throws. That's when he's a more effective quarterback. And then for the Panthers, it's Cam, Cam, and more Cam. He's the leading rusher for the Carolina Panthers. And right now, in the second quarter especially, he's gotten going in the passing game. Yeah, they're going to have to find a way to get a little bit more pressure because J.J. Watt has not been able to show that pressure consistently on Cam Newton, nor has Jadavion McClowney. Well, and that, that has to do with how much they've been on the field here in the second half, they, or at least in the second quarter. Uh, they, they haven't been well rested, and you, you look at the amount of snaps and the amount of reps that they had, that's why they were sluggish there towards the end of this half, or the end of the first half. Houston gets the ball first in the second half. Quinton Demps is deep. through the end zone. It'll come to the 20-yard line, and we go down to Jamie. Well, Greg, you guys just said it. We think Ryan Mallett had a tough first half. I certainly wouldn't want to be him in the second half. Ron Rivera just told me they didn't get after the Texans quarterback as much as they would have wanted to in this game. As far as the Panthers' offense, tempo and pacing is going to be key. Rivera agreed that was a really brutal start to the game just for Cam Newton to get going, so it will be key for them. Speed, and Cam Newton's going to lead them to this win. Thanks, Jamie. And, you know, we had the question all set for Bill O'Brien before he even settled into his seat when he met with us. If Ryan Mallett is not the answer, do you go back to Brian Hoyer? Meanwhile, the running play to start things off with Chris Polk. And Polk out across the 30 to about the 33. And to follow up on that, Greg, Coach O'Brien said, listen, this is Ryan Mallett's team at this point in time. Now, he can't say how long it's going to be, but he knew he wasn't going to give him a short leash for this game. He wants to see him see him for an extended period of time and so look for him to uh, look for Ryan Mallett to be in here the rest of the way. This is Polk again and there's nothing there for Polk. He's racked up by the rookie linebacker Shaq Thompson. First half numbers. 
favoring the Panthers, as you would expect with the struggles offensively for the Houston Texans. Well, and highlighted there is the number of penalties. That's why it's hard to get in any kind of rhythm for either of these offenses, the number of penalties, and then there have been injuries on both sides as well. That's why the sun's going down. <laughs> Second and ten, Malik throwing, and he's got a man across the 40 and close to a first down. That's DeAndre Hopkins, and that is a first down. Well, and you can see the tempo that the Texans are attempting to get into with that first completion of this drive. They got up to the ball, they snapped the ball quickly, and now they're continuing to go in this no huddle. Not necessarily a two-minute type of tempo, but they're going with the no huddle just to increase the tempo and get to some kind of rhythm. Allen throwing, and that's complete and hit immediately after making the catch is Alfred Blue. Thomas Davis with the hit. Word from the Houston Texans, by the way, is that the injured offensive lineman, Jeff Adams, will not return. Second and seven. And they give us to Blue. Blue across midfield into Carolina territory to the 48, and it'll be third and two. Charles Johnson with the stop as you look at the Texans' first half possessions and just not a whole lot to show on offense today. Well, we just saw Alfred Blue carried on that last play, and, and that's the biggest game he's had all day, five yards. He's only got four carries for six yards, so they need to get the run game going to take some of this pressure off of Ryan Mallett. Third and two. Two yards to keep the drive alive for Mallet and the Houston Texans. Mallet throwing and out of the backfield. One-handed grab by Chris Polk, and he got the first down. Fine, fine job by Polk. Tillman and Harper hitting him not long after he pulled it in. Well, Polk does a tremendous job of this one-handed catch securing the football the spot that they've been giving him is enough for a first down that's a catch under pressure new set of downs for mallet at the carolina 45. this is polk polk is a fourth year running back out of the university of washington and it's been it's been running back by committee since the loss of Arian Foster. Well, it has been, and, and really, Blue is your, your main running back that you like to use in first downs. But now that they've gone to this no huddle spread look, this is something that fits better for what Pope's game is. 63, get the ice to Mike. Hold on, what's the protection? 63! 63! Now looking at a second and seven. That is complete to the 26-yard line. The Cecil shorts the third. And for all of his troubles today, Ryan Mallett stuck that one in there. Well, in this, this entire drive, it's, it's about getting your quarterback in rhythm and firing in there. And he, he just seems much more confident right now as he's stepping into his throws. The first half, there was a lot of throwing off his back foot, throwing with pressure in his face. But so far in this drive, he's been very consistent. On first down, this is Polk again. And Polk inside the 25 to about the 24 and a half, maybe the 23 yard line. And by getting this running game going, you also take some of the pressure off of the offensive line. It's, it's a matter of the guys up front for Carolina were really getting after the quarterback, getting after Ryan Mallett in the first half. You can find some balance. That takes that, uh, that away from the defensive line. Four first downs on this drive already. And this is DeAndre Hopkins. And Hopkins at the 15. And you see what they've done different this drive, Greg? You see how they're getting the ball out of his hands quickly. All the throws have been underneath. There hasn't been very many throws. There, there was the one throw earlier that was up the field. But most of these throws have been under that 7, 8-yard range. Get the ball out of your hands quickly. Get the ball on target. This has been a nice drive for the Texans to, to open up this second half. First time into the red zone today. on the quick slam. DeAndre Hopkins inside the 10 to the 7. What's these quick pops doing a quarterback's percentage good? It is, and it's, you know, it, it's getting 
getting into that tempo. I, I keep saying tempo and rhythm, tempo and rhythm, and that's something that Mallet was never able to get into in the first half. On second and two, this is Polk. And he may lose a yard on the play, courtesy of Thomas Davis. So Mallet and the Texans now looking at a third and two. They can get a first down without getting a touchdown. Alfred Blue is in the backfield with Mallet. Well, with Blue in the backfield, as they call a quick timeout here. You started to say? I was going to say with Blue in the backfield, I would think more of a play-action pass because the Carolina is going to think with Blue in there that it's going to be a run inside the tackle. So give that play-action pass, bring those guys in there, and then you had the four guys out wide to where you could get a rub route in. You see Bill O'Brien, the head coach there, off to the right. I thought he was an absolute delight to talk to during our meeting. He was great. You know, you, you never really know. For us, it's the first time getting to talk to Coach O'Brien. And we, you didn't really, you, you know, as you go into those production meetings, you know, how forthcoming are they going to be? And, you know, he was very open with us, very honest, uh, especially about the quarterback situation and what the thought process was going into making that change this week. And some of his thoughts, of course, about the defense and his thoughts about hard knocks. He was he was very open about that. And uh, it, was, it was a nice talk with him. It definitely was. Houston had 93 total yards in the first half, 73 on this drive. Third and two. I still look for a play action here. I look for uh, Alpha Blue to get a play action here, and then you have some one-on-ones on the outside. Now, end zone. Pulled in. Did he come down? It is ruled a touchdown to Garrett Graham. We'll see if that holds up, but what a catch by Graham at the back of the end zone. Well, and from here, it certainly does look like a catch. Graham putting the one hand up and being able to bring it in and, and look from up here to get both feet in. You have to finish the catch. There's one foot down, two foot down, two feet down, inbounds. It depends on when he secures the ball. So he secures it right there. The one foot is on the ground, the second foot's on the ground, and he see if he finishes the catch. Yeah, he did. The ball stays secure. There's no movement of the ball as he hits the uh, the upright. Or not the upright, but the goal post. Mallet with the touchdown pass. Graham with his first touchdown catch. And the extra point is good. 8.29 to play an impressive drive by Mallet and the Texans. And we have a 10-10 tie here in Carolina. You're watching the NFL on CBS. This telecast is copyrighted by the NFL for the private use of our audience. Any other use of this telecast or of any pictures, descriptions, or accounts of the game without the NFL's consent is prohibited. Garrett Graham's first catch of the season is a seven-yard touchdown reception, one badly needed by the Houston Texans. Ryan Mallett, seven out of seven on that drive as Houston pulls even at 10 apiece. 8.29 to play. Here in the third quarter. And this will not be returned. It'll sail through the end zone for the touchback. And Cam Newton and the offense will begin at the 20-yard line. It was Ryan Mallett to Garrett Graham. Dandy catch at the back of the end zone. We're back to Charlotte after this. That Charlotte, North Carolina skyline is easy on the eyes, isn't it? And great weather go with it. Cam Newton to give to Jonathan Stewart. And we'll see if that Houston defense can stand tall now as they pull even at 10. Take a look at the first half possessions for the Carolina Panthers. There wasn't a whole lot there offensively to show to shout about either. No, they were slow coming out of the gate, that's for sure. And, and Coach Rivera had told us that he was looking for a faster start. That didn't happen, but they did get things going in the second quarter a little bit and we're able to uh, to make some uh, some scoring drives on second and eight deep drop for newton newton on the run sliding across the 30 for a first down <laughs> we 
we had to we had to compliment him on that sliding because the coaches have been after him to do a little more of that. Well, that's not something he really likes to do. He uh, will fork with the pressure coming off the edge. Watt losing contain on the outside, and you can see Cam Newton taking the slide there and giving us a little first down signal. Six carries for 47 yards rushing. Newton over the middle, incomplete. Fans want a call against Quinton Demps covering Greg Olson. Let's go down to Jamie. Well, I think, Greg, it's time to reveal to the world that Cam Newton is a pescatarian going on four years. He doesn't eat meat. He only eats fish. He told us yesterday that the thing he misses most is fried chicken, but he doesn't really do it for dietary reasons. It's more of a mind over matter challenge. So pretty interesting. His mercury levels, he admittedly said, are very high. I had no idea what a pes he said. I'm a pescatarian. <laughs> I wanted to say I'm so sorry. Yes, we had no idea. That's right. Thanks, Jamie. Second and ten. Newton throwing. Overshooting. Devin Funches, the man coming across. In third and ten. We've since found out that means that they need anything except fish. And a lot of it. Yeah, he uh, you know, it was it was pretty amazing. You know, he said he still has a sweet tooth, you know. He'll eat some of the not necessarily good things for you, but he stays away from meat and chicken and it's all about discipline. Jamie touched on it perfectly. It's just it's more of a discipline thing, not necessarily because he wants to have a, a certain type of diet. It's just to prove to himself he has that discipline. Newton with time, throwing this side of the field incomplete, but here's the penalty mark. And this looks like it's going to go against Jonathan Joseph. Illegal contact, defense, number 24, it's a five-yard penalty, automatic first down. Ted Ginn is going to come up, and he's just running an out route, but I want you to watch right here. Joseph, he's going he's gonna to reach that right arm out. Right when Ginn tries to make the cut, he reaches that right arm out and wraps it around his waist, and that's what the official sees and why the flag was thrown. So a new set of downs for Cam Newton. And Newton going to keep it on the right side. Breaking tackle, midfield, and out of bounds at about the 45-yard line. Cam Newton just with the read option. He's going to be reading it right off of outside linebacker John Simon. We talked to the Texans, how do you tackle Cam Newton? Is there a certain way? Do you go for his legs? Do you stay up high? Do you tackle his arms? What is it you want to try and do? And they said, well, the first thing you need to do is, is you need to try and wrap his arms because you don't want him to continue to play and throw the ball upfield if you're able to hang around his arms. That time, Simon just too high, not able to bring him down, and Cam just shakes him off. When you're 6'5", 245, you got to bring him down more than that. 19-yard run is the longest for anyone today. Newton throwing over the middle, tip. Intercepted as a penalty marker flies in the secondary. Raheem Moore has the ball, but let's check the flag. They're going to get Demps against Olsen, but because that ball was tipped, it won't be a pass interference. Now, if they call it holding, then the play could stand. Prior to the pass, holding. Defense, number 27. It's a five-yard penalty, automatic first down. Watch Dempsey, he's going to be man-to-man -man on Olsen. Here they are right here on your side of the screen. Watch him and follow him across the field. You'll see him grab him. You see the jersey extend, that official that's in the back. He's a, he's a good 30 yards, 25 yards away from it. As soon as he sees the jersey extend, the flag's coming out every time. So the turnover goes up in smoke for the Texans. From the 40 to give us to Stewart. Stewart trying to bounce it outside and dives for a couple of yards. You know, we, we even even in pregame warmups, you look at the sheer size of Cam Newton. You know, Ron Rivera 
was a pretty good linebacker in his day for the Chicago Bears, and I asked him if he's, if he's ever imagined a quarterback that big running at him, and he just kind of rolled his eyes. Well, the funny story he told is how many people come up to him and say, I didn't, I didn't realize you were this big. He said, because you're standing next to Cam all the time. And he goes, well, Cam is such a large man. He said, it's, uh, you know, it makes him look small. So, and Ron shared with the fact that a guy Cam's size would have played a different position when he was playing. Over the middle. Great grab at the 30-yard line by Greg Olson. Watch Cam Newton as he stands in the pocket. It takes guts to play quarterback in the National Football League, and he stands in here and makes this throw right as he's getting hit and taken to the ground. Puts an accurate throw. It was a keen dent that was putting the pressure on Cam Newton, but with that arm strength and obviously Olsen with his hand strength bringing the catch in. Five catches, 43 yards for Olsen today. Newton. Hit hard that time as he thought about running it up the middle by J.J. Watt. <laughs> and J.J. doing the, the Cam Newton bit. Nice little pop, and then uh, J.J. with the pose first down the other way. He's always creative with it. He's got the numbers to do that. Play clock down to five. Stewart. Stewart inside the 25, twisting his way to the 21-yard line. It'll be third and about three. And he just freezes Kevin Johnson, who comes up for the tackle. You'll see him as he approaches the screen. Stewart here getting to the second level. Watch 30 just get frozen there. Newton under center, third and three. Hey, I floored it. I floored it. Tenth play of this drive. Newton throwing complete inside the 20, and that looks to be enough for a first down. Ted Ginn Jr. coming across the middle. Cam Newton showing a lot of patience on a lot of these completions. And you got to give credit to the offensive line. I know he took a shot a little bit earlier, but that time Texans were bringing heat to try and keep the first down from happening. They picked up, they picked up the pressure and allowed Cam Newton to step in and take in with the with the hit or with the catch as the hit was taking place, securing that catch for the first down. Under three minutes to play here in the third. This is Mike Tolbert. Tolbert shakes a tackle inside the 15 to the 14. This Carolina team won its second straight NFC South championship last year with a 7, 8, and 1 record and had to come on with a rush at the end of the season to do it. Well, the amazing thing about it is they had to go on the road for the playoffs and win a playoff game after after having that losing record but this is exactly what Carolina needed they needed to answer the Texans scoring drive to open up this half with a long drive of their own Newton got rid of it incomplete and Newton was lucky that Jonathan Joseph was dialed in on Mike Tolbert and was coming up to try and secure the tackle and not paying attention to the ball because this could have been a pick going the other way Ball comes out a little bit high towards Tolbert. You'll see Tolbert coming out into the flat here. As a quarterback, does your life pass in front <laughs> of you when that happens? It's one of those ones you release the ball and you, and you wish you had a string on it. There's some of those you just wish you had a string to pull it back real quick. Third and six. Panthers need the eight-yard line for a first down. And they'll take a timeout. 2.09 to play in the third. 10-10, but Carolina knocking on the door. The view from on high with 2.09 to play here in the third quarter. Third and six for Cam Newton and the Carolina offense. Newton to throw for it. 
complete inside the 10. First down and goal at the six yard line to Tolbert. Tolbert's going to do a fake cross. He's going to come out here and then re reverse back out that way. And that's really what freezes the linebacker in terms of coverage, creating that separation on Justin Tuggle. Tolbert is a fire club at 5'9 and 250. Everybody pointing fingers on the offensive line. Cleet Blakeman will get the last point. Neutral zone infraction. Defense number 90. Penalties half the distance to the goal line. Still first down. That's Jadevian Clowney. Half the distance will put the ball just inside the three. Clowney lined up right here. First and goal. Stewart in the backfield. Newton on the quarterback draw, diving into the end zone for the touchdown. Greg, he really was Superman on that play. This is a called quarterback draw. See, he plants his foot, he goes airborne. And Raheem Moore, not a prayer to stop it. <laughs> Gano with the extra point. It is good. 104 to play in the third quarter. And the Panthers answer right back with a touchdown to grab a 17 to 10 lead. Carolina comes right back to grab a 17 10 lead on Houston. Led by Cam Newton. We have 64 seconds to play here in the third quarter. Quinton Demps deep for the kick. And we'll not get a chance to run this one back. It'll come out to the 20 yard line. Cam Newton prior to the game out on the field in his Superman shoes, his Superman t-shirt. Come game time, he gets airborne over Raheem Moore. And you know, only Superman would come up smiling. How's that for an accomplishment? Who knew the great Otto Graham ran the football that much? Most rushing touchdowns by a quarterback in the first 63 games of a career. And still going. With the way they made that last drive. And yeah, they, the rest of the Texans. The rest drive. of those guys are pretty much done. <laughs> Chandler Worthy. Worthy. 25. 30, and out across the 30 to about the 33. A reminder, tomorrow here on CBS, the geniuses from last season's hit drama are back. Don't miss the season premiere of Scorpion tomorrow at 9, 8 central, only CBS. Last 40 seconds of the third quarter. This is Alfred Blue, and Blue with nowhere to go. After that last drive and touchdown, Trent, Lots and lots of congratulations for the Carolina offensive line coming off the field. Well, and rightfully so. They had to come back and answer the Texans' drive after they opened up the third quarter with a long 80-yard drive. And Carolina going back out and doing the same thing. So it was it was a good answer, good test for the uh, for the offensive lineman of Carolina, as you mentioned. And now it's up to the Texans. After having not having much offense the first half, we've seen quite a bit here in the third quarter. Pass to the outside. That is complete to Cecil Shorts, the third. And he is out of bounds about a yard short of a first down as time expires here in the third quarter. 
We've played three in Charlotte. 1710 Panthers. We're back after this message and a word from your local station. You're watching the NFL on CBS. With our producer, Bob Monsbach, our director, Suzanne Smith, Greg Gumbel, Trent Green, Jamie Erdahl, and the rest of our crew here in Charlotte on a day that began with NBA MVP Seth, Steph Curry pounding the drum, getting the honorary honors. I guess honors are honorary. Carolina with a 17-10 lead as we start the fourth. See, now I've got, I'm going to think about honorary honors all <laughs> the way home. That's going to bug you. Ryan Mallett has completed eight straight passes. Work to do as we begin the fourth. That string, second and ten. Polk out of the backfield. Well, and under pressure, Mallet didn't have time to hang onto that ball and see how the play developed. He had to get rid of the ball quickly. He was trying to anticipate. Had to release it early and really didn't have much chance from that point. So Ted Yim Jr. is deep. And he will fair catch this one at the 17 yard line. So that's where Carolina will start and going back to Steph Curry, reigning NBA MVP, grew up playing high school ball nearby Charlotte Christian, won three conference titles, earned all state honors, and returned to the area with his NBA championship trophy this week, stopping by Davidson College on Thursday and Charlotte Christian on Friday. I bet you that trophy gets you a lot of access. <laughs> he, uh, he's a heck of a player, heck of a person too. He uh, tremendous for the community and really happy for him the success that he's had. He's kind of good. <laughs> Without a doubt, that's for sure. I just can't get over how quick his release is. It may interest you to know I have an equally quick release, but the ball is nowhere near as accurate. <laughs> There's Del Curry, his dad, who was a really good shooter in his day. That's perfect timing, catching him flossing as he's watching the game, but good hygiene is never out of style, I guess. Welcome to television. <laughs> <laughs> Second and eight. The focus later. That's right. Newton over the middle. Olsen, the intended receiver. It'll be third and eight. Well, that ball was tipped. That was something we, we saw a lot of in the first quarter when there was plenty of pressure applied to Cam Newton, and his arm was either being hit or balls were being tipped at the line of scrimmage. That time, having Olsen down the middle of the field, but because of that tip, not allowed to get to him. From the start of this game to now, Trent, it feels like the running game has just been an afterthought. Yeah, Cam, Cam's had it had some effective runs, but it's it's been in big chunks and uh, just not a real consistent, steady running game from either team. Speaking of Newton up the middle, diving for the first down and got it out to the 27-yard line. Well, you have to remember, when a quarterback is running, if he goes head first, he's just like a regular runner, that it's where it's where he's touched is where the ball is down. If you go feet first and you slide, then it's where the ball is when your feet begin the slide. So by going head first, he's able to pick up the first down. Cam Newton with 77 rushing yards compared to 61 for the entire Texas team. And Newton to throw on first down, had it batted at the line. And Jadevian Clowney getting credit for that one. Well, Jadevian playing, playing once again, only 27 miles from his hometown, coming off the edge. He's able to get a hand on this ball. He talked about the number of family and friends that were going to be in attendance. and He always plays inspired football, but he had a little something extra today, being in front of the, the hometown people. Jonathan Stewart to the outside. 
That was the 30th snap play today by Jadevian Clowney. He played 30 last week. Will O'Brien indicated that he could get more this week. Well, and he was very clear when we had a chance to talk to him. He wants to play as many snaps as they'll give him. He, uh, it's the Texans that are that are monitoring things. As you see his family here, there's his mom. Yeah. Guys from the South Carolina area, they, they, groups of 25 and 30 and 35 people visiting today. Newton, under pressure, trying to spin away, escapes once. A helmet goes rolling out, and he's down inside the 15-yard line. Eddie Pleasant, Quinton Demps. See, they bring seven men in protect, seven men with the rush. Can't block everybody, and Pleasant's the first one to get after him. Helmet comes flying off. Before Demps comes and cleans it up. I'm telling you, there's something about those Texans helmets. They just don't want to stay on. This is Mumphrey trying to turn the corner. Back to about the 45 yard line. 11.46 to play here in the fourth quarter. Superstars on both sides of the ball. And right now, Cam Newton, his guys, with a one touchdown lead. Looking to win their first of the season. Carolina looking to go 2 0. Center and a straight drop and throw it, and he underthrew it. Intended for Cecil Shorts. A reminder coming up: the Subway Post Game Show. JB and the gang back in New York with all the latest NFL scores and highlights coming up on the Subway Post Game Show. See if the Texans take advantage of this good field position. Chris Polk in the backfield. On second and ten, far side of the field and overthrowing everybody. Intended for Hopkins, covered closely by Josh Norman. The thing I've noticed about Josh Norman today, Greg, is that he has a tendency to look back at the quarterback. He, he talked about trying to focus on the quarterback and even that time, as the play's going down the sideline, he, he faces back, squares up, and tries to jump. That's the second or third time today we've seen him do that. So, Third and ten. Mallet over the middle and a bullet in and out of the arms. Is that a completion? If it's a completion, it's a fumble. Josh Norman covering. They're going to talk about it. When well, you have to remember the rule here, not only. It is rule to catch and a fumble. You have to have both feet down. You have to have the ball secure, and you have to be making a football move. There's the catch. One, two. Thomas Davis with the hit, forcing the fumble. Welcome back. Cleet Blakeman about ready to make his announcement. The question is if Cecil Shorts the third made a football move with the ball. After review the play, the receiver did not maintain control of the ball. Therefore, it is incomplete pass. Brings up fourth down, the previous spot. Please put 11 minutes, 31 seconds, 11.31 on the game clock. Let's go to Mike Carey in New York. Mike? Hey, Greg. This year is a little different than last year. A receiver has to have control, check, two feet down, check. 
but then have the ball long enough to become a runner, to be able to award off an opponent or avoid contact. There were no more steps after that second step. The ball stripped out incomplete. All right, Mike, thank you very much. And the punt is going to be downed just inside the 20-yard line. So with 11.22 to play, Cam Newton and the Carolina offense back onto the field. And a reminder, next Sunday, the NFL on CBS brings you doubleheader action. Trent and Jamie and I will be in St. Louis for the Steelers and the Rams. The Chargers will take on the Vikings, then in game two, the Bears and Seahawks take center stage. All begins with the team that will take you all the way to Super Bowl 50, JB and the guys on the NFL today. First down at the 20 yard line. This is Jonathan Stewart, left side, will lose yardage. Back at the 17 yard line, Vince Wilford and Whitney Merciless with the hit. Well, and you have to give Carolina credit for attempting to stick with the run. You, you mentioned earlier, Greg, that Cam Newton is leading them in rushing with 77 yards, but Jonathan Stewart now has 13 carries for only 50 yards. As the Texans defense tries to keep them one, one dimension. On second and 11, Stewart and Stewart to about the 22. I mentioned Vince Wilfork on that last play. It's strange to see Vince in anything but a New England uniform, isn't it? Yeah, there's certain players he just uh, he recognizes as one type of uniform, and Vince was the anchor of that New England defense for so long and for many world championships. But he has a great relationship with Romeo Cornell, and when he became a free agent, Mike Vrabel was a teammate of his, you see right there, up in New England. It was easy to recruit him down here. One of the delightful guys in the National Football League. Third and eight. Newton. And on the slant, trying to break on the football, intended for De Devin Funches, was Kevin Johnson, the rookie cornerback from Wake Forest. Saw it coming. You see right here on the outside, Johnson reads that all the way. Funch is the big 6'4 receiver out of Michigan, but Johnson planted that foot, drove on it before Funchess even did, and was in position to get the interception. Fourth time today, Carolina has gone three and out. Keith Mumphrey back at his own 22-yard line. Booming kick. Back at the 16 and right up the middle is Mumphrey. Just across the 30 to about the 32-yard line. 9.52 to play in the fourth. Neither quarterback going to be writing home about their performances here so far today. We still have time. Chris Polk in the backfield behind Mallet. Polk with the handball. And hit right off the bat by Benet Ben Wickery. Just a reminder, your weekend begins here with Thursday Night Football on CBS and NFL Network. Washington visits Eli Manning and the New York Giants here on your home to Super Bowl 50, CBS Sports. So there's the total yardage story here in the fourth quarter. Minus two for Houston and one for Carolina. The official came up and was talking to Derek Newton. The left guard. Number 72 has been identified as having medical issues. He's got to go out for one play. And that. is absolutely required by a rule. Greg Mance in the lineup for replacing. Mallet throwing over the middle, intercepted. Picked off by A.J. Klein. 
and Klein returns it close to the 35-yard line. He started in the middle today for Luke Keekley and comes up with the pick. The coaches were raving about A.J. Klein, just what type of player he was, what type of pro he was, knowing that he could play multiple positions. They had no worry at all about him filling in for Luke Keekley. Welcome back, 9.02 to play in the fourth quarter. Cam Newton, play fake, with time, going for it all, to the end zone. Touchdown! Philly Brown! Billy Brown is one-on-one -on -one with Jonathan Joseph on the outside. Cam Newton comes off with a hard play fake. Gets the safeties to bite up. Here's the combination. Gives a little nod to the outside to get Joseph's hips turned. And then takes it inside to the post. That is just like they drew it up. And we have a, let's see. They're calling for some sideline help for one of the officials. Is that line judge Carl Johnson? Welcome to the near sideline. He needs a little hydration. Meanwhile, the extra point attempt is good. And with 8.53 to play in the fourth quarter, Carolina stretches its lead to 24 to 10. On the hard play fake, you're going to see Demps come up in formation. He's going to bite on that fake, but you're going to see the route is just a nod to the outside with a deep post. So as Cam Newton comes off of this hard play pick, he sees the safety drop. Sees Brown with that outside nod. So here's the route here. The safety's way behind. He has no help over the top. Cam Newton puts it in a place, and Philly Brown jumps up, catches it at its highest point, so it doesn't allow Jonathan Joseph to come up and make a play. And as we've learned over the last couple of seasons, you have to finish the catch to the ground. Philly Brown does finish the catch. You know, you really have to do some jumping if you're going to high-five Cam Newton. <laughs> uh, I like the, uh, the excitement that he brings to the field. He, he definitely uh, enjoys playing football. You can get, get that from him. A.J. Klein's interception. Set it up. And this ball will sail through the end zone for the touchback. One more look at another touchdown pass for Cam Newton today. And this one right on the money. And then for the fans, it's football giveaway day here in Charlotte. Man, you see the smile on his face. Up by two touchdowns in the fourth quarter. You, they'll make you smile like that, Greg. So Mallet, now we get a penalty marker on the near side of the field.
there is no foul on the play for a defensive hold. The pass was in the air at the time the foul occurred. Play is called legitimate. It's second down. Meanwhile, Carl Johnson coming back onto the field after being treated on the sideline. A little, little heat exhaustion. Good man, Carl. Second and one. Mallet lofts it up, has a man open, and he hits him. 30 inside the 25 is Nate Washington. Lost his footing, thought he had six, and couldn't maintain the balance. Ryan Mallet has time. Nate Washington here at the top of your screen. Mallet just laying it up over the top. So all the way down to the 23-yard line, 48-yard pickup. And here are the Texans knocking on the door. Mallet over the middle, inside the 15-yard line to DeAndre Hopkins. Being down by two scores, the, the defense knows what the, the Texans are going to do. So for this depleted offensive line, kind of a patchwork offensive line that they've put together here, giving Mallet time to throw, especially these last two completions. Mallet stepping up, throwing incomplete. Intended for Cecil Shorts the third. 7.26 on the clock. That time Carolina showing like they were going to bring pressure and dropping out into their cover two and dropping back in zone. Forcing Mallet to try and hit the underneath throw. On second and ten, the pass. Like the same play from just a moment ago inside the 10 to the 8 yard line to Cecil Shorts the third. Well, being down two touchdowns, you definitely think this is four down territory here. So you have two downs to pick up the first down. They need to get it to, looks like just around the three yard line. So look for a little bit more of the same. Bill O'Brien trying to work the inside. Bill O'Brien was in four down territory back in the first quarter. <laughs> he was. Third and four. Now lobbing for Polk out of the backfield. And it'll be fourth and four. That's just recognizing that the defensive end was peeling off on your running back, so he just tried lobbing it out there, hoping that Polk could run underneath it. So what's been working for Ryan Mallett? Well, I think Carolina's going to show pressure, but then ultimately drop out into coverage. So they've got to find, find those inside windows that they were on the previous part of this drive. And we are going to get a timeout. Timeout with 6.38 remaining. Carolina uses its second here in the second half. And a reminder coming up, the Subway Post Game Show. JB and the guys will have latest scores and highlights coming up on the Subway Post Game Show. Just a reminder, Texans can get a first down at the three-yard line. So based on what they've been doing this drive, look for something inside again. They're gonna spread things out with moving Polk out into the formation, spreading him out wide with the three wide receiver look. Got Graham in there, Garrett Graham is the, the tight end, the stand-up tight end to the left. Right now, all this shifting and movement and talking that's going on is just to find a declaration and find out if they're in man-to-man -man or zone where he wants to go with this ball quickly. Now. Pulls it down, gonna run for it, gonna get there for the touchdown! Mallet escaped the rush and looked up and had a wide open field.
couple of times in this game we've seen one team score and the other team answer. Well, and, that, and that's the one thing you can get caught up in when you're facing Ryan Mallett. You're thinking, okay, he's not the mobile guy. Brian Hoyer is the mobile guy. So let's go man-to-man -man and let's tie everybody up. But you don't assign anybody to the quarterback because you're not thinking Mallett's going to be the mobile guy to run around. And nobody assigned to Ryan Mallett there. He sees everybody covered and has a window to get it into the end zones. Mallett engineers an 80-yard drive in just 2 minutes and 22 seconds. And Houston back to within a touchdown again at 24-17 with six and a half to play. But what's the combination of receivers? So you have three, including the tight end Graham here, and you have Polk out here with DeAndre Hopkins. And what happens is with them dropping into their routes, you watch everybody lock in. You got three on two up here. You got four on three down here. But this entire part of the middle of the field is wide open. As Ryan Mallett steps up and is looking for it, that's why no one's open. You have three on two and four on three, but nobody's assigned. Mallett recognizes that, has a window or lane to get it into the end zone. Seven plays, 80 yards. And still plenty of time. Plenty of time. Timeout situation. Houston has two remaining. Carolina has one. Carlos Thompson with the tackle. Those of you just joining us, number one has had himself a heck of a day, Trent. Well, here's the touchdown pass early on to Ted Ginn, who's on a double move on the outside. Then Cam Newton with Superman gets flipped into the end zone and follows it up with a touchdown pass to Philly Brown on their last possession. That's how Carolina got to their 24 points. A look at the numbers on the day so far. Meanwhile, for Houston, it's been a little bit slower going as Ryan Mallett, the new starting quarterback, has worked his way into a rhythm here in the second half. Jonathan Stewart pulls his way close to the 35-yard line. Well, and it's important to point out, you talk about Ryan Mallett in that first half, the Houston Texans had 93 yards of offense at halftime. In the second half, they have 178 yards of offense. So you mentioned Mallett getting into a little bit of a rhythm, and obviously they're getting some points on the board, feeling much more comfortable as they've been able to move this ball in the second half. And we talked about at the beginning of the day how unusual it is that a head coach would change quarterbacks just one game into the season and not because of injury. Well, and Coach O'Brien was able to tell us. He said, you know what? Ryan Mallett got into that fourth quarter against Kansas City, gave us a spark, and I want to see what he can do. I'm not going to be a, a quick trigger with him. I want to see him ride it out. So uh, when things were struggling there in the first half, we knew that he was going to stick out, uh, stick it out with Mallett for the second half, and things have turned around for him. Well, he was bombarded all week with that question, wasn't he? And he was very, he was very nice about it. He knew we were going to ask it. He knew it would eventually come around. Uh, but he was prepared for it and, and had the answer that, uh, that definitely backed it up. Third and two now for Newton. The play fake to Stewart. Newton throws it back and wide open is Greg Olson. Olson midfield, 40, 35 yard line in the first down. 27 yard pickup. What the, what the Carolina Panthers are going to do, they're going to overload and put an extra offensive lineman to one side and put Olsen. Olsen's going to be on the short spot here, lined up as a tackle, but he's eligible and he's going to sneak out the back. Cam Newton's going to roll out this way. You get the defense to draw across, you, you bite them in, you feed them in, and then Olsen sneaks his way over to that backside and you hit the throwback for the big game. Olsen had just one catch last week. He has six for 70 yards today. This is Stewart. And for those of you just who have just joined us, J.J. Watt has not been the disrupting force that one would normally expect. He's, he's had some plays, but he hasn't been the, the, the consistent force. Carolina has done a nice job mainly double-teaming him. You, you'll see him with guards and tackles, sometimes tackles with a tight end. Very rarely do you see a running back on him, but they're putting a lot of big bodies on him and trying to wear him down, especially in the second half. You look at time of possession. Uh, it's, it's been a, a case where they're trying to wear him out. 3.45 to play in the fourth. This is Tolbert. 
Chase Tolbert back to the line of scrimmage and no more. Brian Cushing, Whitney Merciless combined for the tackle. The Texans, because of the score, because of the situation and the time left, they're putting a lot of guys down in the box, putting a lot of defenders near that line of scrimmage. See J.J. Watts Day, seventh straight game with a sack. Three minutes to play. Third and nine, and a big down for the Houston defense. Newton pumps once, throwing incomplete inside the 10 yard line, intended for Olsen. And covered well down there by Quentin Demps and by Raheem Moore. Well, that's a prime example of the protection and the time that Cam Newton has had most of this afternoon. Really nowhere for Cam to put that ball. Try, try and put it high and on the back shoulder and see if Olsen can't, can't get it as the, uh, the Panthers are lined up to try 53 yards. 53 yarder. Gano 0 for his last three from 50 or more yards going back to last year. This one on his way and not even close. This one is blocked at the line of scrimmage. So look at the field position now that the Houston Texans get. With 2.44 to play and two timeouts. It appears that uh, Jared Crick right here, number 93, it appears he's the one that's going to get a hand on it. You'll see the push. He's lined up right next in between Will Fork and, and Watt. Knew he got a hand on it. And now because of that attempt, this gives the Texans good field position with 2.44 to go. Mallet and company from the 43. Bounces off of the shoulders of Chris Polk out of the backfield. It'll be second and ten. Well now, and this will be interesting to see what Caroline decides to do defensively. Do they keep with their four and their three-man pressures and try and drop into coverage and keep everything in front of them? Or do you continue with the pressure, bring those linebackers, go with some man-to-man? -man. If you go with what they've been doing, they're, they're just going to rush the four, try and drop guys in coverage, and, and see if Malik can make those accurate throws up the field. This is Polk. Polk shakes the tackler in the backfield. 45. Works his way to the sideline. Clock continues to move as he'll be marked down at the 47-yard line. Thomas Davis with the tackle. 225 to play. That time Carolina decided to bring pressure, brought pressure from the strong side. Mallet recognizing and checking to the run away from that pressure. Now on third downs, they got trying to get the crowd noise into this. Third and six. Got man to man down here. Hopkins and Norman. Mallet with a bullet. And DeAndre Hopkins wasn't looking. Gonna get a roughing the quarterback, it looks like. Personal foul, roughing the passer. Defense number 94. Late hit on the quarterback. At least 15 yards in the previous spot. First down, That's Houston. Defensive end, Coney Ely. They had a perfect design here. Ely's the one coming off the edge. He's gonna get the penalty here. But they had a disguise of pressure, so Mallet thinks he has man to man. You can see Ely takes a couple extra steps as he hits Mallet. Makes no sense. You got him off the field, bringing up a key fourth down. All of a sudden, you give him first down. Give us to Polk. Polk to the 35, and that takes us under two minutes. 1.56 to play here in Charlotte. Houston looking for the tying touchdown. Along with Trent Green and Jamie Erdahl, Greg Gumbel back in Charlotte. A game that started sluggishly has turned into a heck of a tussle. 24-17. Carolina, a minute 56 to play. Houston looking for the tying score. I think Jason the mic. I think Jason the mic. Mallet needs the 28-yard line for a first down. Mallet under pressure and under throws, and Chris Polk was covered out here by A.J. Klein. It'll be third and seven. 
Third and seven, Mallet still has to remember with a minute 51 left in this game, he still has plenty of area in the middle of the field. He can't can just look to the outside. It's not like he's down on his own 20 yard line. He's in good field position here. So utilize the space, utilize the, the open parts of the middle of the field as he approaches third down. And down seven, there is no thought of a field goal here. Third and seven. Mallet throwing, complete, Nate Washington. And Washington, let's see where his forward progress is marked, very close to a first down. I cannot tell you how difficult of a catch that is by Nate Washington. That is a fastball behind him as he's running inside. He has to reach behind him and make this catch. They stop it for a measurement. Washington's going to be at the top of the screen, and he comes inside. Incredible catch reaching back to get it. Here is the first down line. Here is where the receiver is. Washington trying to get to the ball. It appears on that replay. Oh, just short. a little bit short. So fourth and inches. But on the replay, it looks like a good spot, so I don't... You know, even though it's under two minutes, from a spot standpoint, I think that was a good location that they marked that ball. Fourth down, you have a patchwork offensive line, Greg. You got three, three, different, three different guys up front. Because of injuries, guys sliding to new positions. The success. And now we're going to have a timeout taken by... Houston. That is their second. So each team down to one timeout. He set the game clock to one minute 27 seconds. 127. So with the success, so with the success that Mallet has had throwing the football, do you throw it or do you run it here for the first down? Well, on fourth and short. I guess they're taking another look at this to see if the spot is good. He's clearly short of the line. Actually, I think he was even further away from the line than what they ultimately spotted it. It's only going to be a few inches away. So where they've had success running the football is by spreading people out and then trying to get the run inside. So I think you do that again. I think you spread everybody out. If Carolina decides to, to bring that pressure to put all those guys in there, then you do one of your rub routes on the outside if they decide to keep everybody expanded. And the Texans are doing opposite. They brought in big bodies trying to run the ball. This is Polk. Polk fighting for first down yardage, and he gets it. To the 26-yard line. A minute 16, a minute 15 to play. Carolina 1 and 0, Houston 0 and 1, looking for win number one on the season. Just looking for a tie game here right now. Mallet, a bullet to the 20 yard line, complete to Cecil Shorts the third. You still have time, 50 seconds here left in the half. You still have one timeout. Mallet needs to understand you can utilize the middle of the field like you did on that last completion. Second and four. Mallet throwing it far side, threw it away. Stops the clock with 32 seconds to play. And it'll be a third and four. Smart decision, stopping the clock, throwing the ball away, realizing there's pressure coming up the pocket. On third down now, with 30 seconds, you need to continue to put the ball in the air. So you can still utilize the middle of the field. So because you're close to the end zone, you utilize the middle of the field, you can get everybody up and spike the ball. You don't have to burn the timeout. If he's in bounds, it's different than having the full field where you have to stretch because everybody's condensed and close together. You can still get a ball in bounds, get the first down and spike it and save that timeout. And we get a timeout call by Carolina. Carolina takes third and final timeout. This is a 30 second timeout. So Carolina is out of timeouts now. Would you feel good running the football here? I wouldn't. I would, I would continue to throw it. I think you spread them out again. 
you see what they're going to do. What what Carolina has shown is they bring their safeties down, or one of the two safeties, to act like they're going to bring pressure, and then they bail them out so that they have help over the top. Don't give up the big plays. They're trying to disguise some things. But I think you continue to work the middle of the field. You only need four yards to get the first down. So go up, get the inside receivers to clear out in the middle, get your outside guys to come rubbing underneath. You pick up the first down, get down. You can spike the ball. That'll give you around 20 seconds with a timeout left and a first down around the 12-yard the line. Third and four. Mallet going for the end zone and overthrows everybody, and we have a flag on well, the far was, side of the field. It was Ely that was off sides. He, he got leaning on that snap count, and if Mallet had realized that, you could just throw a jump ball in the end zone because it doesn't matter. You've got a free play. If it is on Carolina, then it's first down for Houston. Offside. Defense, number 94. Player was in the neutral zone at the snap. Five-yard penalty. Yardage is enough for a first down. Ely, once again, making the mistake. He had the roughing the passer earlier to keep this drive going. Now getting caught with the hard count, giving him the first down. Just inside the 15-yard line. 27 seconds on the clock. Mallet throwing for the end zone and incomplete. He had a man running free at the goal line. That was he, Nate Washington. You know, Greg, he did have a man running free, but he didn't have time. There was, there was a, a defender got free on the inside. Even though Washington came free up the middle, you'll see Washington, he gets free up the middle, but Mallet's going to get pressure coming up the middle. He doesn't have time to sit there and wait to see which direction Washington's going to go. Had to get the ball in his hands. A smart decision on his part. Save the yardage, save the time. Second and ten. Mallet under pressure. Going down. Tried to throw it away. Says it's an incomplete pass. What do the officials say? Clock continues to move and now stopped with nine seconds to play. Well, here's the problem. If, if it, even if it is an incomplete pass, it's going to be intentional grounding. Right. So that's that's the mistake that Mallet makes on this. Is I know he doesn't want to go down with the ball, but go down with the ball, use the timeout, and then it gives yourself some time. The Texans want an incompletion. The Panthers want an intentional grounding. That's the first indicator that it might be an intentional grounding as he goes over to talk to Bill O'Brien. So Bill O'Brien talking about the clock. The clock continued to move even while the players were on the ground. But you know, it's a different situation, Trent. If they throw the flag, the clock stops then. But if you wait to throw the flag, there's a delay and a loss of time on the clock. Well, you have to remember the new rule now is you can go to replay to check the end of half and end of games. You can check the clock with the replay system. Here's Cleet. Okay, here's the situation. The ruling on the field is an intentional grounding an offense by the quarterback. That's a 10-yard penalty from the previous spot, plus a loss of down, which will bring up third down. Also, this situation requires a 10-second runoff. However, the Texans elect to take a timeout in order to save the 10 seconds. At the time the pass was incomplete, there were 12 seconds 
on the game clock. So please put 12 seconds on the game clock. So that timeout that Houston had come in comes in very handy. Mallet throwing the ball away. And watch the game clock on the left side. So here's the game clock. Here's Mallet about to go down. So they want the game clock reset. They could even at, reset at it 12, at 15 or 16. It looks 16, like going 15 yeah. or 16, right. So now Cleek's coming over to take a look at the, the replay system. Remember, that's a new new rule with the replay system this year is you can review the, the clock at the end of halves and end of games and in overtime. Let's bring in Mike Carey. Mike. Hey, Greg. Cleet Blakeman get that right? Yes. Uh, about the clock? Yes. Yes. So the rule is actually that if the clock runs out, they can fix it and replay. What happened in this case most likely was all seven officials are on the field or watching the clock. One of the officials saw that it was an incomplete pass, looked up and saw what the time was at that point. He went and communicated that with the referee and then they reset. That's my opinion of what happened. All right, Mike. And the clock should stop right when the ball hits the ground and somebody must have seen that. And it looked to us that that would back the club clock up to around 15 or 16 seconds remaining. It might have, but when the official looks up and sees it, he sees only what he sees on the clock. And in this case, it looks like 12 seconds. But then that's, is that or is that not correctable in review? No. The only clock situation that's uh, reviewable is if the clock ran to zero. Then they can go back and put time on the clock. Okay. Unless, of course, there was a reversal on the play. Okay, Mike. Thank you, sir. Meanwhile, as this game <laughs> trudges on, can, can you be your own doubleheader game? You know, <laughs> it, the, I understand what Mike is saying. I understand what the, the, the letter of the law is in terms of the rule. The problem is, is when the ball is incomplete, the clock is ticking from 17 to 16. So it's 16 when the ball hits the ground. So the official that's in charge of that, that Mike says is part of the crew, that when the ball is incomplete, that's his job to look up at the clock. He waits four seconds until he looks up and sees the clock at 12 seconds. So there is a four second discrepancy between when the ball hit the ground and, and when the official is now claiming that the, uh, the incompletion took place. So it'll be interesting to see what, uh, and here comes Cleet away from the replay booth. And, what was ultimately determined. Ten penalties on each side today. Here's Cleet Blakeman. After review of the play, the ruling on the field stands as called on the field. In addition, the back judge has confirmed with me that at the time the pass was incomplete, there were 17 seconds on the game clock. So please put 17 seconds on the game clock. Brings up third down. So here's the play one more time. You see the game clock on the left. Mallet gets rid of the ball. It falls incomplete and 17 seconds on the clock. Meanwhile, Mallet is looking at a third and 22 with no timeouts remaining. Houston needs the five yard line for a first down. You either have to throw this ball so the receiver can get out of bounds or you have to throw it into the end zone. I don't know if you can get two balls snapped in the amount of time they have left. This side, and Polk out of bounds, short of the 20-yard line. 13 on the clock. Well, if you get out of bounds, you have time for two more plays. But it is fourth down. So they're going to have to take a shot into the end zone. Fourth and 16 for Houston.
Mallet, loose, looking, throwing, end zone, overthrown at the back of the end zone intended for DeAndre Hopkins. You see Carolina only rushing four, dropping seven into coverage, and everybody's pretty much at the goal line or behind it. Mallet on the run comes close to passing the line of scrimmage. Cam Newton overexcited <laughs> with the incompletion as he goes crazy with the win. With that, Carolina holds on for its second win in two outings, 24-17 over Houston. Meanwhile, the Houston Texans fall to 0-2. And Ryan Mallett's first start as a Texan falls short. Yeah, valiant effort here in the second half. You know, they came out in the, the start of the third quarter after halftime and put together a nice 80-yard 80, 80 drive. It's just... Cam Newton came up with some bigger plays when needed. Carolina Panthers have now won six straight regular season games going back to last season. Let's take a look at that fourth down play one more time. I want to remind you the final score. 24-17 coming up next the Subway post game show for Trent and Jamie. Greg Gumbel, so long from Charlotte. You've been watching the NFL on CBS, the home of Super Bowl 50. It's the Subway post game show. You'll see plenty of this.